It's the end of an era. The DCU is dead. Unlike uh, at the least it was in this movie, because but they it's going don't out kill on a high anyone. note. Yeah. You know? This uh, high, this is perhaps the best entry. This is the best Aquaman movie. Hmm. I, I tell you, <laughs> if I would remember the first one. <laughs> Bringy, what's your opinion on that? Bringy, I validate my opinion. Really, really <laughs> bad. Um, I. I don't know. I feel like they're the same. <laughs> like they're, oh, no. they're not as bad as each other. Does Orm lift this one above the first? That's my my favorite payoff in both film. films would be in this one. So yeah, which I mean, there How'd that is sneak into the is, film. Um, <laughs> there is there is less want and destruction in this one compared to the first one. Perpetual, but, uh, uh, but a whitewash in history. Sorry. The the crab Blue. people don't yeah, seem to remember crab, what happened. Crab, Crab King is miraculously alive when he was absolutely killed by Arthur <laughs> while he was cackling like a madman. Mad Maybe his body regenerated. Pain. Well, he said the no, all he, he lost, lost was his, his arm. Floor, remember? Yeah. Floor, oh, yeah. okay. But uh, he, he, blamed, yeah, he blamed Orm for that, so. Well, it's because Orm Orm's did it. He, chopped up, but he blamed him for that, but didn't blame Arthur for killing many, many, many of his men uh, when he burst out of the uh, the ocean floor with that giant monster. Yeah. Do you think it's like a this pressure, is... political pressure thing? Like, he's like, if I just don't bring it up, we can be friends, so. <laughs> it's like an Elon Musk situation. This is Elon's fault for allowing this misinformation. Oh, that was off stream. That joke won't make any... They won't have a context yeah, like, for that. Joke. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, that won't count. Damn. Um, it would have been great, though, trust me. Kind of funny to me looking at like the Aquaman movies is how much they made Aquaman like a psycho. He's like a crazy. Yeah. He's a crazy guy. He's, he he's not insane. very heroic a lot of the time. A lot of the time, that, he just right. wants to hurt people. There's that, and there's the, the. I am so fucking over the dude, bro. It's like, how did it get this yeah. far? It's ridiculous. Well, you're all I, like that. It's uh, it's kind of weird. I don't know that much about Aquaman. I'll be honest, but no what I does. do know is that Aquaman in the comics uh, and in other material like animated stuff and games is generally presented as very dutiful and stoic. Mm. Um, but because of the memes around Aquaman, it feels like they kind of were like, "Well, we got to make him like a fun bro guy because that'll." That'll like get people in the door, you know. He's not a he's not a goofy he he he's a goofy clown man who talks to fish, but he he winks and nudges at the camera when he does it, so it's okay. This um... like that, and they were kind of right because the first film miraculously, inexplicably made a billion dollars. On our uh, year in review, we said about the uh, insincerity of a lot of films being their downfall. This is this is peak that. They can't take mm. things seriously for even a split second. There's one one payoff I like, and it's where they take it completely seriously. Uh, they manage yep. to maintain yeah, the tone for about ten seconds. There, are, there are a lot of scenes where the conversation they do the thing that you're meant to do in a film, where you you're like meant to be developing your through lines for the central conflict between the characters, and they'll have that happen every maybe like 15 20 minutes for 20 30 seconds and then it's like whoa no back to the fun quippy adventure uh, yeah. Ran random explosion uh, we don't want you to use your brain for thoughts or feelings or emotions eat the slop mm. drink that sludge make it make a big old mm. sludge smoothie we're gonna very, turn your yeah. brain into a uh, sludge it's smoothie very very sludgy this very oh, this sludgy, mega sludge. which um i guess i don't know if that's a fitting end to the dceu <laughs> or not um, no, yeah. I, like I think it, um, I, mean, it fits. I think the Flash think was a more fitting Ed dig to the DCU, you know. Yeah, that felt like um, the Aqua. Yeah, the Flash was like kind of everything culminating in this disaster. In the last couple of movies, the last few months has just been everybody accepting that it's over, but they've still got movies coming out. <laughs> So Which is a very weird position to be in. It's like, yeah, we know it's over, but here's two more movies. It's like, oh, okay, two more. Two more like, oh no, like two hundred million dollars. You know, it's not like this ain't a cheap movie, but yet nobody cares really. Um, yeah, I've heard nobody talk about this or mention it. This really not is really. like the hidden movie. Well, it's funny, hidden. It has outgrossed the Marvels. Um, <laughs> I still yeah, feel like the like... Marvels had more dis you know, it had like people memeing on it before it came out and discussing it and making fun of it. Mm. This has somehow slipped just under everyone's 
I guess, discussion agenda? Um, I, maybe it is just that the Marvels is hyper relevant when it comes to discussing the meta and the state of Marvel and everything like that. Yeah. Whereas again, DC, we all accept it being it's in the over. MCU. Yeah. I think, again, I think the Flash yeah. was the equivalent of that. Like everyone did talk about that yeah. and noticed it. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. one is you know the death of the king versus the death of some random duke somewhere. You know, but kind of see you in the DCEU. It, it is funny aquaman again to remind people aquaman one is the most successful dc film like in terms of the yeah. everybody, yeah. margin isn't it everybody knows uh, that's it, a bit of a fraud not like it like like legally but like nobody no it, it's 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 kind of reminds it's me of funny. avatar Everyone's like uh, it's, by a it. a, it's a bit of a floomp isn't it it's like a floompy wombo thing of oh yeah aquaman made more money than the dark knight okay yeah yeah, yeah. but but really yeah like statistically about, like, it's put up on this back. pedestal but we're all surrounded in this big room we're all looking at each other like i don't, I don't see why yeah that's it's like there. it's a clerical error like something was yeah, delivered and... to the wrong address or somebody accidentally engraved Even the, the film wrong itself name onto the trophy is awkwardly like stepping off the pedestal like i shouldn't be here this like... is ridiculous even the films like, like what i made how much money how how'd that happen yeah. Uh, what? I mean, I'll take it, but what? But uh, uh, obviously the the results are not being repeated this time around, which again, dude. it feels appropriate because Aquaman and Captain Marvel came out around the same time, made around about the same money, and look like they're going to make around the same percentage of mm. uh, what the first film made, which is considerably less. More like 20-30%, which is kind of incredible. That's but, quite like, a drop-off. Rip Bozo. Uh, I am... I think it's earlier it passed yeah. 300 million now, so well, that's more that's already not, more than I expected to be honest. It's not great, kind of sure. cost like over 200 million dollars, but yeah, you know. which is again staggering that's um, so expensive because it looked look pretty bad. I think <laughs> I still um, happily say it's better than the Marvels and better than the Flash. Yeah. And yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. I, think so, I don't think it can yeah. be. Uh, I don't think it can be as bad as a flash with all of the time yeah. travel. Flash. I think we so said on looked, the looked previous very fake. Uh, the the year review that uh, it's better than Rebel Moon as well. Rebellion. Uh, it is. Yeah. It's, it is. Well, it's, uh, I I think it might it might be better than the first film, like slightly, which edges would make it out. It, yeah, which like we like the, to be way, fair here, like okay? A, it would make it like a three out of ten if that was the case. Hey, yeah. this is nice though. It's a movie that we didn't like open by saying this is the worst movie of all time, and we had to reassure <laughs> yeah. people that series like, no, no, it's really bad, but no, yeah, this is a really <laughs> bad movie. It's um, but it's really like not the kind of film that makes me angry watching no. it. Like it's um, it's just kind of like this clown movie that I can kind of like. Yeah, yeah. I'm it a little wastes... sad that my species and civilization produced it, but you know, I don't have a personal stake in it. And it didn't insult me directly. I I just find I find it easy to laugh at these movies, not in the way that they want me because I remember something that annoyed me the way people talk about the first one of oh it's a fun movie. It's like it's fun at its expense, yes. Um but it's not fun in the ways it wanted to be. Like a lot of the jokes in the first movie and this one don't land, but when they play the fucking orm music when he shows up on screen three times in thirty seconds, that shit's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, I watched it again with, with metal, really and I was looking out for the theme this time, and it pops up so much. It's great, and then when like Black funny. Manta shows up, they play the theme as well, and then they oh, have yeah. the they explosion. do this like for a lot of things in this movie, like establishing a shot, music, mur, 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 and then as soon as they start beating something up, it's like ah, oh, heroic music, mur, mur, mur. like very, very loudly. Like it's like, do you see the see this I, uh... is like super heroic? It's like I yeah, I guess. They keep playing the uh the the Aquaman theme a lot as well, which um I mean it's well it's it's uh I've gotten tired of that one. Um they ruined that. Oh have you? Have you now? That's the that's the that's the champagne on the Nile theme song. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's right. The champagne to fill the Nile song. The 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 champagne is the Nile. So that was a funny line delivery. Um, anyway. That's it. Good Are job. We're gonna, we gonna go chronological, because there's, uh, uh... I figure that's probably the way to go. Oh, boy. Yes. Though I can't imagine um, we're gonna be going into everything, because there's a lot of waste, like, like padded time in this movie. Oh, yeah. There's a lot, well, there's yeah, a lot, a lot of, of weird shit happens. Bad jokes that I just don't care about, so. <laughs> 
like oh yeah experience. i don't think i ever laughed at this movie in earnest it was always added no. Oh, no, well, no. I got uh, that's the most annoyed I got was every time we got close to being serious in any way, he would get dude bro joke. And I was like, oh, that's like, right. Uh, and like, uh, it's about like, haha, isn't isn't Arthur a wacky dude, bro? Well, the one I um I even brought up on FNT, I think, was he's like, I didn't even like it's it's your obsession with like destroying the surface that made me even try to stop you and take the throne. And then Orm was like, what? Like my whole life, I was told you were coming for my throne. Like that was that was always gonna happen. He was like, no, I I just. I didn't want the throne. I just didn't want you to destroy everyone. And for a moment, it's like, ooh, 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 this could be interested. Oh, and then he okay. says, um, you know, so he's like, and, and you fought me. He's like, yeah, and I won with, like, nearly won without any prep. Roasted. Roasted. He actually says roasted. I was like, oh. And, and I was like, what? Like, you, you, you that was, and, and, and you yeah, know. you were getting close to doing something with your characters, but then you got too scared to uh, follow through. They do. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know where this this trend has um, arisen from. What is it? Was it a fear of, or is is it a fear of something, or does it want to become something? I think it's. I think it is just that the the thinking goes. You need to keep people happy and laughing. Um, you can't make things too serious or too sad for too long. You got to make. Mm. You got to maintain an upbeat tone, not realizing yeah, like the... that. The perfect synthesis of this is we come out of the cinema going, holy shit, that film had everything. That felt amazing. Exactly. No, I know. I totally agree. Um, I think that you need to push for more of the extremes of longer and greater amounts of, uh, you know, sadness to emphasize the peaks and the dips rather than having a little, like a little, you know, like a little slope that's like maybe it does a very slow decline. Or actually, I guess it would be like just like a shallow little, like a little pond, um, you know, like a little. A little uh, I mean, bump it, in the road. It feels appropriate to reference Whedon, right? But it's just, it takes a bit more of a surgeon's hand, so to speak. For example, when Iron Man gets thrown out of the building, right? Almost dying, flies back up, and uh, there's this one person you've forgotten. And I think, you know, it's prompted in a sense of like, oh, obviously, yeah, himself. And he shoots Loki, and he says his name was Phil. And it's like... Mm funny because it's like you just booped him and it's like him being badass and coming back up but it's also referencing someone who's just died and had one of the most impactful deaths in the MCU it's like that's that's a balance that's, that's uh, something to be kind of careful with we, we can smile but also be sad and it's like that's not easy to do but a lot of people Ooh, do it anyway no, like they try anyway well it's uh maybe that's like the biggest mistake that people make is assuming that comedy is is like easier than drama um, when comedy is incredibly challenging, it's yeah, challenging. comedy is really difficult. It's, it's tough to tell people what the for instance, you could make a pretty it wouldn't be that difficult to come up with very easy examples and a sort of template for creating drama, but to do the same thing for comedy, like it's a like procedural or like it's an equation, you just can't. It's it's a lot more difficult because there's so much unspoken about it, and a lot of it seems to be intuitive and reacting to what's happening around you and the timing. It's more complex. More human. When people try to make rules. They definitely some like rule. You know, the rule of three with comedy, or just the general idea of subverting expectations. But then, you know, anti jokes are subversions of the expectation of the subversion. Um, it's, uh, that, that, like, it's, it gets, it's, it's, it's really difficult and particularly trying to figure out what is the balance between having those jokes to make people laugh, but also ensuring that our dramatic beats, uh, are not only not compromised by any jokes that we decide to throw in that may undermine the tension or the drama, but, uh, even that the jokes can help sort of accentuate and elevate the drama, that balance, as we've seen with a huge amount of Marvel movies over the last few years is uh not it's not something that you can do effortlessly. And I think they've really shot themselves in the foot in terms of their longevity um by undercutting all of their emotional and dramatic moments. It makes them far less memorable and nothing yeah. really sticks with you. You don't walk out of the theater really with any sort of lingering feeling of endearment towards the earnestness of the film. And when you extend that towards the sequels and things in the cinematic universe down the road, and you look back on, like, who are these people? What are they doing? What's the point? Why am I attached to it? You're just kind of left empty. It becomes fast food. It's not really um, 
it's not filling in a meaningful way. Well, as was mentioned, it's just content in terms of comparing the complexity, right? Like, it's not much of a reward or celebration of the film to say that they've got all of them going, you wanted my throne because you wanted it. And then he's like, nope, didn't actually want it at all. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Super easy. Like, that's mm -hmm. fucking tier one drama creation. Maybe the equivalent for that would be Aquaman slips on a banana peel. And it's like, isn't that funny? You're like, uh, it's fine. Like, <laughs> you say it, it's funny. It's, uh, <laughs> the drama, of course, what I want is at least like a fucking tier two where you have them have a realization or a bit of something comes out that wasn't meant to come out. And now it causes something later. Just that's like, that feels like the next step. It's like, what's tier three? It is like, well, multiple dimensions and then growth. And, you know, I feel like I'm trying to write a book I'd write it here off the top of my head. But the point is just that comedy and drama have this, um, they probably map onto each other in terms of construction somewhat, but like the greatest drama and the greatest comedy are both going to be really difficult to pull off. Meanwhile, the skill flaws, maybe they're similar as well, but like basic jokes, but even, I don't know, I feel like general audiences getting the brothers to have conflict over things that they haven't yet sorted out versus, oops, I slipped over, just, I just feel like the drama is going to have more effect, um than basic comedy, and that is, in a sense, what implies the ease of doing the drama. We were just essentially saying they're damaging the drama they're coming up with with comedy, because they're so incompetent they can't do comedy. It's like, oh, so they're not incompetent enough to do the drama either? And it's like, I guess they're competent enough to do basic drama. The fact that... Um, enough to understand that there's meant to be character arcs in a, yeah, in a story. Uh, the fact that they're like, oh, uh, King Dolph Lundgren, he doesn't like hey. Orm. And then it's like, oh no, I'm in trouble. Orm, save me. And then the camera goes, will Orm save him? And we go, <laughs> hmm. And then he goes, he does. And then the king is like, I like you, Orm. And then we go, yay. That's what Ooh, I mean. It's like, yeah. I feel like the comedy, the comedy equivalent of that might actually be someone going like, you're a stinky poo-poo. And then they go, oh, I'm offended. And then the whole audience oh, laughs. I am the king. And then they, and then they but like, the other person in the to, to just, and it's like, oh yeah, haha, <laughs> funny. Yeah, just trying to make a point about the whole drama of his comedy thing. It's like, it feels like the drama would, that, that, what I just described about the drama, that's so crap. But I think most audiences would be like, cool, thumbs up. You did a thing. Yeah. While the comedy equivalent, they'd be like, hmm. You get, like, free thing. drama just from having a story with the minimal amount of conflict. It <laughs> creates that creates that bottom line. I think, um, it's just the, 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 what makes it funny is the threshold of it made you laugh, or at the very least it made you smile, compared to just noticing Yeah, it is what it is when it comes to advancing drama. Like, you've succeeded at comedy when you're getting someone to laugh, like, plain and simple. If you can't get them to laugh, then, like, it's not working. Um, and that's, I guess, more of a, I, it's just more clear whether it's working or not, isn't it? Compared to someone looking at drama and just going, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that, I like that's it. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I think that the average audience member is willing to give more points for literally having, oh no, a demon. And then a man goes, hello, I am Prince Brave. And then he kills the demon. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'd be like, yay. While the joke equivalent of that is like, knock, knock, who's there? Me. Me who? You. <laughs> Or some shit, and you're just like, what? <laughs> like, and it's, it, as long as you just, you know, that sort of level, I just feel like comedy has to work a bit harder. And it's just funny to watch how their incompetence with comedy kills their already incompetence with drama. That's all we're seeing um, mm -hmm. over and over Good again. Job. I uh, I suppose we should get started with the film. <sighs> yeah, I suppose. Uh, I suppose so. Let's do it. Let's talk about Aquaman 2, the search for the, the revenge. missing land. The, 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 the quest Man for the, the, the quest for kingdom. the 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 tardy content. Oh, and <laughs> not that we we could talk about this whatever, but just um, did anyone on Earth have trouble detecting the theme in the film at all? The uh, uh, oh, about <laughs> you talking about like how brothers should stick together and the importance of family and forgiveness and second chances. Uh, th that like one I feel good... like. Isn't as overt as. Are you, are you just talking about like global warming? And <laughs> global yeah, warming? Like, obviously. Uh, like, yeah, yeah this what, they only, yeah. only mentioned it like 17 times. Oh my god, it's actually like just oh, the worst dude, ever. Global warming is so bad, it breaks the curse of well, the blood I mean, spell. <laughs> it's just that I just find it funny that the film, in this film, in the DC world, 
Black Manta is like primarily responsible for global warming. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. He, he is primarily, he is the largest contributor, larger than any given nation on the planet. <laughs> Um, anyway, the film opens with the first of 20 really bad exposition dumps. Oh, sick. Um, there are they so many. very kind of little hilarious. faith in you to remember oh, yeah. anything about what the fuck has happened or is going on. Mm. And I don't blame them because no one does. They were correct yeah. to assume that no one remembered <laughs> anything about anything. A lot of... Uh, Good a lot of the opening and plenty of other parts in the film as well are clearly made with the understanding that maybe Aquaman made a billion dollars, but fucking nobody who watched it remembered <laughs> what happened in it, and they need to remind you of everything that is going to be relevant while forgetting about all of the things that might contradict anything that is present in this film. Um, I mean, the big the big new development is that uh, that Arthur, good old Aquaman, he's got a he's got a big old seahorse called Storm that he rides in on to fight some pirates. I guess he yeah. got that seahorse some other time when it feels like wouldn't the normal way be that you have him get the seahorse on his journey or something? Or you could just ride it to where he already has it. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. I, I guess so, because you just have to sort of accept, oh, I guess he's just got a big seahorse that he rides on uh, to go to battle. But he does. Uh, he's got a big yeah, seahorse. Yeah, he's got a seahorse. Well, the seahorse will become extremely important, prominent, and pivotal throughout the entire film, so it's good that they established that <laughs> he really has this one. Um, the, 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 the opening exposition dump where he talks about himself, again, is incredibly insecure, because it keeps referencing the whole, like, oh, well, I talk to fish, and people think that's kind of lame, but I don't care. And it's like, well, I mean, you obviously care. You brought it up. I don't yeah. think, do people actually think that's lame, or is that just uh, the, a, a lie that's consistent? I, I, I feel uh, like that's only the meme, basically. I feel like it's a meme, because there's yeah. nothing, there's nothing, I would say that there's nothing. I've never heard anyone make fun of him for that, really. Like, maybe well, if you go back 15 years or so, it was like a Spongebob joke or something, but I don't actually feel like people think that's a, a lame thing to make fun of him for. Um... I think it, I think the problem is that like there's not that much broad exposure or understanding of Aquaman beyond mm -hmm. the idea that he's kind of a meme, and so because of that, it means that like a lot of because uh, I mean there's definitely there's clearly been responses in like the comics and obviously in films and and games and stuff like that to the idea that Aquaman is lame. Well, um, they did the the boys thing, the 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 boys Aquaman guy, the deep. That's they, right. Like, that's sort of do that with him. But I again, I just like the idea that he is really powerful underwater and can like command the sea to do things for him. You know, that's just like yeah, that's I mean, that's just a power set. It is. Um, they should stop doing the whole talk to fish meme. It's uh pretty tired and like it's not very funny. Yeah, um, and they should stop letting it be a thing that gets like them so annoyed that they have to like front load about how he, they totally don't care that people make fun of him because he can talk to fish. But yeah, if you're if I mean if you have water powers, if you can control the ocean and you're really strong underwater, then being able to talk to fish can really tip the scales in your favor. I mean, you saw it in the first movie, him talking to fish guy. Okay, <laughs> he just he killed so many people. All right, so then. many of the guys that he was going to lead going forward with his fish. So you know, um, the the big. The relevant factoids, um, the relevant, like, details of his life is that he's now married to, uh, Mara, um, and has a kid. Played by uh, who? Oh, Amber Heard, yeah. <laughs> oh, Amber, uh, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Mm. Was, okay. You, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, like, sporadically be seeing her, and she's not gonna say much. Um, no. the film was obviously, uh chopped up a bit <laughs> to um... DC DC made a gamble and it they did not win that gamble. Hmm. No. Uh no. And it's pretty there there are some parts, especially towards like the latter portions of the film where it's pretty apparent that the film's been chopped uh it's been a bit butchered in the editing bay. Like very significantly. Um in any case there's just like a big montage of it's just oh look at look at Aquaman 
he's not very he doesn't really like his job kind of you know mm. oh boy but he likes riding motorcycles well it's the um, and, um it's the political element that he doesn't like he doesn't like sitting in meetings doing all the mm -hmm. the work that a king does 99.9 percent .9 of the time which is mm -hmm. listening to advisors and talking to a council and trying to do what's best for the people and signing tax forms and making a budget and it's like as yeah, off yeah, will so. eventually reveal he just likes killing um he doesn't he's a really, violent man yeah. he doesn't like diplomacy say in any alternative where he can go and kill people um he's he'd rather in. do that he yeah. loves aquaman it aquaman is the anti-viserys yeah i mean i mean he's the no i guess he would have to hate his family to be the anti-viserys uh yeah, and he, he doesn't like his family. brother so we're halfway there yeah i guess like so, some by the end though Oh, they it's they do true. a lot of um. They like there's a there's a few piss jokes uh during the opening montage. Oh yeah. my god, you're right. The standard oh, piss in his mouth. The diaper Funny. and then piss, and then there's a second one in where there's mouth. piss. It pisses and in his it... mouth like twice. Well, yeah, because the second time Mary uses her little, her, she uses her like power to control water to like shoot yeah. the piss into his face. Which um, is funny because I thought you would be better with poop, but you know. Oh, 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 yeah, like it's it's Got doesn't her. set a good tone with just piss jokes like right no. from the outset. Um, it reminds me of time. the really legitimately uncomfortable cat licking its genitals thing <laughs> from the Marvels. <laughs> yeah. It was, was this weird. That was really weird. Yeah, that one that was... legitimately made me kind of uncomfortable to watch. And this one was almost getting there, where we have this very indulgent insistence that the baby pissing in Aquaman's mouth was something that I should really find funny. Hilarious. Well, it's piss is funny. That's that's the thinking. That's as far as it went. Um, another thing as well, I, I found this funny, is like, he, he's given his big, he's talking about all these things. It's like, oh, you know, when I became king, they didn't tell me about this council. It's like, they didn't tell you about it because they hadn't come up with that. They had, yeah. like, that wasn't in the first movie. <laughs> there, there was no council that we saw that was, like, really important in terms of, I don't know how much you guys remember about, like, the Aquaman 1 politics, but they were insane and stupid. Um, <laughs> like, Ocean Master Orm's whole plan was that he needed to get, like, all of the kingdoms. I think he needed, like, five out of seven, or four out of seven. Yeah, of the he needed the crabs and the mermaids and the, all that stuff to do whatever. Yeah, and then that meant that he would be able to go to war on the surface. That was, like, his whole angle. And in this one, they mentioned these other kingdoms, but they don't think about them nearly as much they're trying to localize it way more on atlantis mm -hmm. specifically um while also adding other elements that they then breach anyway um but it, yeah like it's it, this opening montage it doesn't set a good tone it's just lots of really basic jokes pretty sloppy exposition it's it's not very good no it's definitely um yeah, I, sloppy with an understandable lack of faith that you don't remember anything. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, which again, it's no, they're right. No one remembers fucking anything. Nobody remembers. Uh, it made a, made made a billion, billion dollars, dollars, and no one remembers anything about it. It's like Avatar, kind of. It is like Avatar, right? Um, we then, uh, we then after the montage, our first like scene of just and we're back. Sorry about that. I, I had a oh. classic internet fuckery uh, just oh my goodness. when Freem was I explaining. I was holding alone for a moment there. The beautiful was opening sheep, scene past the montage. Was a, was a sheep chewing on the internet lines? Yeah, no, a seahorse was a was a seahorse sea uh, gnawing on the under oh, under sea cable. That, you're saying that Aquaman's like seahorse storm was messing with Mola's internet to mm. stop him from talking about this movie. Mm. That's rude. Interesting. What do you mean? Very trying to stop us, which now makes this, anyway. this even more special. That you're hearing it out there. This is the government don't want you to hear this. Oh, That's God. right. Uh, <laughs> so after the montage, which we were talking about, the the first like scene of just regular conversation is I just keep calling him Boba Fett. Oh, Aquaman's yeah. dad is Boba Fett. So Boba Fett and Aquaman Boba have a conversation. <laughs> and uh, this is because, again, this, this film's really subtle. They they just start having a conversation because they're like, oh, you know, maybe your son Arthur Jr. there, who you gotta you gotta give him some siblings, you know, brothers. It's like, oh, all right, I guess this is this is uh this is <laughs> the big theme that we're trying to build for this movie. Yeah. We're just talking about like, oh, you know, brothers, they gotta get yeah. along, all right. You gotta Brothers need to work together. You yeah, know, but my like brother, brother. Was a, my brother is a dick and uh, killed my father. Or, bleh, 
So yeah, I don't like him. Screw so that. We have conflict. Also, they really I got like, that. They got that drama. Get us paycheck, didn't they? Drama am easy for story make. Mm -hmm. Also, they 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 got that Guinness paycheck in this one, didn't they? Oh Fuck yeah, me, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, it didn't occur yeah. to me at the time, but you're right. Yeah, Guinness is uh. Like the fridge opens with like fifty cans of Guinness in there, Guinness, right next to the bed, as baby seen bottles. In the smash hit film Aquaman, Aquaman. and the Lost Kingdom. <laughs> oh, yeah. imagine the promotion if you go to the liquor store and all the Guinness bottles have his fucking face on it with his goofy <laughs> fucking <laughs> grin, going like, "I'm the king of the sea, and this is my favorite alcohol on the ocean, or something." <laughs> Uh, it's just, there's not much to be said. That's basically, that's the that's whole it, point yeah. of the scene is advancing the thing of like, brothers should get along and you two don't get along. I sure hope that's not the case at the end of the film. Um, there's, a, that, there's a lot more scenes of Boba Fett in this one than in the original based off of memory. There's a few uh, scenes yeah. like actually having a couple conversations with Aquaman. One of them kind of like endearing. But, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, it's because like one of the big sort of... Um, I'm not sure. I think um, I think they got around about the same. It's just that he got a lot of his scenes at the beginning of the film in the the first one. This one, they were mm -hmm. kind of like a little bit more spread out. Mm -hmm. um, he gets a lot at the beginning and then a bit at the end. It's just funny because if you would have asked me before watching the movie, it's like, oh no, he died in the first one. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, no, but the house die. being attacked, it was like, oh, he, he probably died. died. In this one. God, that was like right at the beginning of the movie. That was yeah. um, a flashback. Um, the, the the more relevant one was that massive tidal wave that uh right. that hit all of the uh. Remember in that film, that tidal wave hit all of the east coast of the United States, which um a lot of people live there. Uh, there's a lot of big not anymore. You know, like, New like York is on a New York is on the east coast. New York, like, Boston, Philadelphia, you know, yeah, like Miami. But in any case, um, another relevant uh, bit of information from the scene is that uh, Arthur Jr. can talk to fish, and they Whoa. have a conversation like, hey, you can talk to fish like me, we're gonna go on so many adventures together, and then title screen, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, wow. I found this, I found this, this aquarium there kind of weird, just, just standing there with like five fish in it. What do you mean, a fish tank? Do they not plead for freedom every day and he has well, to I was, was going to say, or... talk to fish. Well, like, you could enslave fish. Well done. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what he does. Enslave them to fight your wars. Mm -hmm. And die nice. and sacrifice their lives for your political games when they'd rather just be frolicking around in the sea. But, I mean, yeah, that's basically that. We were over in Antarctica, and um, Black Manta comes in and they play the music and it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just... thought the title was weird too in the iceberg. Oh, the uh, yeah, the title card is like a big explosion, or like the ice is crumbling, uh, and then it reveals Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom carved out of the ice. Yeah, because I thought I they called it Aquaman the Meltdown. <laughs> Aquaman there would be like a monster coming uh, out of the ice. I was like, oh no, it's a title screen. Okay, no, we're not up to the monster. It represents out of the ice. a terrible yeah. monster, but it isn't the monster. Yeah. Um. Black Manta has got like a crew of people down in Antarctica trying to do like an um excavation. Um and and uh we get we get a little bit more exposition. So um uh Dr. Shin, who what's the character he plays in the Marvel stuff? Some shield uh, asshole. Sure. Well, the, the, the actor sword is uh, Randall asshole, Park, right? right? <laughs> sword. Yeah. Oh, sword, oh, no, wait. not shield. Well, yeah. Sword hole. Is he with sword. Is he with S.W.O.R.D. or is he with, like, the CIA, FBI type people? He was with, uh, I think he was the FBI. Yeah. Yeah. The point being that, uh, it's D Dr. Shin, who was, I think he was in the first movie, like, briefly. He was on, like, TV. And then he got recruited in the post credit scene uh, with Matt's so, like, I'm, I'm a kill Aquaman. You're gonna Man. help me, buddy. I didn't even remember that, but all right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was set up in the He's first He's practically movie, a main so. character in this one. Mm. Um, he gets a lot more screen time than Amber Heard does. Um, <laughs> a lot more screen time. And what a great character Which he is! is I'm so glad, because glad we see so much of him. If you Google for the cast, like Amber Heard comes up first. It's well, she's funny. got third billing, um, it, but she she does not have third billing screen time. No. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, they're looking for Atlantean technology, and um, and and like he's out, sort of just out in the middle of Antarctica, or away from their base. Um, and this guy comes up to him and it's like, oh, we're standing above a bunch of seismic rays, whatever that means. I don't even seismic know what that rays? means. That is, yeah. that's an odd it's thing. Just, I've never heard seismic rays. Waves? I've heard seismic waves. 
Uh, maybe he did say waves, but it sounded like he said rays. They it probably was, fucked uh, it up. Yeah, and they've got like a big screen show on it, and then and then an earthquake just happens. Like, yeah, oh, no, oh, yeah. inconvenient. Right, well, then, whose fault well, is it's that? Sim it's simultaneously inconvenient and convenient because yeah. they fall into the crevasse, and the no-name guy's leg gets broken, and uh, Doctor Shin's fine, even though it looks like they fell a good thirty meters. It's, it's um, pretty high. It's pretty it's big fall. Yeah, it's a long way to fall because they have a shot looking up, uh, where he's like standing up and holding a flare. And that crevasse looks really high. Yep. They fell a long way. Maybe he um, landed on a to... slope or something, like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> no, it's very he, soft he... ice they landed on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, ice is known for being incredibly soft. Yeah, very. Maybe climbing. there was a lot of snow. Maybe he had a very thick parka and it's I mean, like a oh. like a safety balloon around him. I presume that if I fall from like thirty meters high onto a bunch of snow, that it's still going to mess me up a lot. Oh, absolutely. Because it would just become really dense, and uh, it doesn't snow a lot in Australia at all, Yeah, really. snow, snow will help uh, a bit, but I think there's definitely a limit for how much snow will protect you from a yeah, fire. Yeah, I assume yeah, there's but, a lot of snow underground. He's, uh, he's got plot armor. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's no snow underground. He's, he's got a strange. lot of plot armor. He, uh, he, he, he might have the most plot armor in the film. Um, oh, yeah, he falls. He, he gets has exploded. morality armor, too. Oh. Yeah. Um, we will talk about that later. That they're the, oh, the the they're in this little and they're, they're, this little crevasse and they're like oh what's uh man, what caused that earthquake and then um and then the the, the ice breaks and a big flute monster appears like tentacle a flute, flute tentacle monster yeah and then he grabs the guy with the broken leg and drags him away um and then and then that's that like yeah. that's that's just that guy gone you served your purpose of being here to die. See ya. That's right. And um, now the movie coming. can drag you away with an evil tentacle, and we can proceed. Uh, well, it is kind of funny how, like, because the first movie had this as well, of just like, yeah, here's some guys that are just there to die horribly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the only purpose they serve. You know? Yeah, they're the modern-day red like, shirts, yeah. Pretty much. Um, he's, not very, uh, then, he's not very choked up about it, our, uh, our doctor uh, man. He's vaguely traumatized, but not so much that he can't just be normal, like two minutes later. Because he, he yeah, presses like, like a little button to get some help. And they come down and they're like, well, you know, what happened? And he's a little bit shaken, but then he just is basically like totally fine as soon as like the next... Well, I don't think he asks him if vaccine. his buddy's okay or no. anything like that. Well, no, because, because bad guys don't care about people on their crew getting murdered. I mean the doctor. Oh, that he doesn't. Well, I don't I, recall I, him ha showing like really any level of concern for his friend being dragged away um, by a monster. Not really. The, the easier read is that he was concerned for himself. Yeah, he was scared for his own safety. All, all, all he says uh, is like, "There's something down there." Mm hmm. Because we need to get moving. We got plot yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of plot to do, actually. Um, How do you say that? Because they take a lot of time to get to the next anything, you know? Yeah, this is the kind of. It, it's the sludge movie. There's so much plot in this movie. Yeah. So much shit gets brought up. By the time they get to the secret land, there's a. It, it feels like we've started an entirely new movie, too. A little bit. Um, it feels like there's so many segments. Well, it's just we gotta go to a lot of different places. We gotta explain yeah. a shit ton about why, who, who is there, what they are, why anything is the way that it is in this location, and how it connects to the next place. Because I mean, I wasn't kidding when I said that, that this film's got like a good maybe seven or eight big exposition mm -hmm. dumps. Yeah. Um, and every time they're not. Some of the contexts are really funny, but we'll get to them. Like the way that they try to contextualize them as being actually like, oh, no, we needed this. This is fine. It's not an exposition dump. It's a character. It makes perfect sense. Um, but in any case, they, uh, they, they head down to where the flume tentacle monster was. They, they just start exploring the depths, which um, we, we're, we're left to conclude from their conversation that global warming has like melted the ice to where... They can now walk around in this massive like area and explore these ancient ruins. Um, right. At this point, you don't know that Black Manta is personally responsible for climate change. Um, <laughs> this that like, bastard. You're just you, at this point because that's that's yeah. Like you don't know that. Oh wait, he. Oh oh no wait wait. I'm I'm mixing him up. It's not. He hasn't personally caused climate change yet. This is just this is just like oh, yeah, the he, sea ice has melted normally because they do they point. do. Apparently they do like a time skip here in a bit that I didn't even properly they, notice. They do a, a five month time skip. Yeah. Uh, 
five months before the actual like story like happens proper. Um, this is the big setup. But they're, they're they're exploring these ruins, and they're these ancient, you know, the ruins of, of a long lost place. And there's some spooky skeletons in the ice. Oh no! Um, they're like diving down into the water to explore, and then more flume tentacle monsters just burst out and launch a surprise attack oh. um, and kill everybody except um, except Black Manta, who oh, it that's th- the tentacle monster throws him really far <laughs> into the sea floor and he's fine it throws him really far again we're talking like 50 60 meters hard into the sea floor and, and he's just fine um and and of course the tentacle monsters know that he's the main antagonist so they they <laughs> spare him when all of the other bad guys just get killed horribly um and not only that the tentacle monster throws him exactly where he needs to go <laughs> uh, obviously as part of the plan yeah, right. the tentacle the monster, monster was uh, a, a real hero setting up the rest of the movie. Because the tentacle monster throws him directly to uh, it's like two halves of a big black trident. He grabs him, puts him together, and a bunch of magic green floop uh, bursts around, and then zooms into Black Manta's eye. And there's a, a spooky monster man who says, "I'm gonna give you the power to kill Aquaman, but you gotta free me from my prison." Um, mm-hmm. And then it shows him images of him having killed Aquaman and his entire family while standing there as the house is behind him burning. And he's <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, I did it," because he's really evil. That's what he wants to do. He just wants to kill Aquaman and his whole family. Um, it's I. Just, He's just unhinged. Like it's, <laughs> that's, uh, but remember, the reason why he wants to do it, because something that they also show in this is they show direct scenes from the first film, from the opening action scene on the submarine where um, Aquaman was fighting you know, Black Manta, his dad, and, and those guys. And um, uh, Black Manta's dad got pinned under like, uh, like a giant rocket. And then Manta said, you gotta, you gotta help me. And uh, Aquaman's like, nah, and walks away and leaves <laughs> him to die. And then he blew himself up to make Black Manta leave. So that's the setup, is Black Manta, he wants to get revenge. That's about it, really. That's all you Pretty need much, to understand yeah. about Black Manta. He wants to, he wants to kill Aquaman. Um, you no, know, he has but, evil uh, man in him, so hooray. Yeah, evil man. Yeah, he's and... possessed by the spooky demon. Oh no. He has that's a name, right? right? Uh... Which... Uh, or is it Greg? Kordak. Kordak. Uh, Kordak. Kordak. No. But we don't I like Greg yet. better. Um, Can we call him so Greg? Up, in, up until Greg this X. point, I've just been calling him uh, Spooky Skeleton Monster Man. That's what I've been calling him. <laughs> when he, I, when, you fir- when I first saw him on screen, I laughed. I, mean, I think he looks dumb. <laughs> you could get away with calling him Spooky Monster Man throughout the whole film. It wouldn't, knowing the, that I history like that they give things. you doesn't matter at all, but it's mm. fine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, as was mentioned, five months later, um, we we cut to a news report talking about how climate change is getting worse. Um, and then we, I just, I love I love just like oh yeah, just show on television. That's like just just the easy shortcut for bad writers when it comes to exposition is just have the TV oh, the news. on yeah. and the news just yeah. says what's happening that matters. Um, Isn't Boba uh, Fett like what's going on? <laughs> Uh, oh, I, uh, that's, uh, that's later. That's, that's the later. other okay. expo dump on the other um, TV. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My um, bad. This is just, Arthur's having a nap. Mara comes in, wakes him up, and says, there's been another plague outbreak. Oh, no. It's like, oh, plague oh, outbreak. And then we cut to that, uh, that aforementioned council that never existed before. Um, and basically what they convey is atmosphere is, uh, being poisoned, which mm. makes the underwater people sick. And that's the, the land people's fault. We're sick of those sick of those people up on land we should we should go up Bastards. there and kill them all just like uh like <laughs> instead of just to do. show up and say hello please stop <laughs> i mean well yeah because because what arthur says is he wants atlantis to reveal themselves to the world and, and engage in diplomacy which i don't know to me that seems like a really good idea um but all of the council really hate this um basically that like the or or, or the very no, this is this is what it is. One person on the council hates it, and nobody else has a voice because they're not speaking named characters. There's oh like yeah, one that's true. lady who's antagonistic to on the council. Yeah, they basically it was like, yeah, like, we should kill Orm. Was actually right. Uh, we need much. to destroy everyone on the land. Pretty much, they they basically say like, we gave Orm the power to go to war. So if we ever reveal ourselves to the land, it's going to be so that we can go to war. 
mm-hmm. to which it's like, oh, I guess you've solved nothing then, Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, it totally reverses the plot of the first one. Now he just has to deal with a different group of people who want to destroy the surface world. Exactly. It's very strange that they would have him do that instead of them saying, well, we don't know. Like, I don't think he should do that. And maybe mm-hmm. secrecy is something we should value. And blah, 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 blah. no, it's like, nah, kill them all. Genocide well, them to all, all air breathers. Something that I find uh, weird is that it seems like part of their notion is, no, we should stay hidden, to which I would say... I mean, do you honestly believe that nobody is speculating on underwater people when Aquaman is clearly an underwater person? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. or, or like that massive tidal wave of, that just seemed like unprecedented. I'm sure that at this point it's gotten around that there are absolutely like underwater people. I don't even see how it could be a secret with uh yeah, Probably with, like, against Aquaman. the Justice League at this point. Uh, I mean, the thing that it's kind of funny because you never see them, but like the DC films have established very routinely that the Justice League are like a known entity operating yeah. in the world. And Aquaman's a part of that team. Exactly. So, that's what I was going for. <laughs> I mean, and, and plus it ain't that much of a stretch, right? Because at this point people must know about, um, must know about, uh, Themyscira as well. Mm-hmm. Surely, because of Wonder Woman. I I'm, I just find it funny, the idea that they actually believe that they'd be hidden. I feel like at this point, everybody knows about Atlantis. I don't even know that... Is it just what worth is... sort of casual mention? Like, the will building is absolutely non-existent in this... Oh, it's oh, broken. Yeah. It's not as bad as the MCU, technically, because of scale, right? Mm. Um, like, like, well, like... It, it hits one of the core boxes. Stuff, like, it, it's... it's... It's got one of the worst elements, which is just zero recognition of any yeah. other IP it belongs to in this world, even though that's supposed to be the appeal, uh, at least a portion of it for this kind of storytelling. So, you know, they failed as bad as possible on that front. Every single time any help could be provided by any of the entities in this world that aren't Aquaman yep. that have been established, it's, there's, there's nothing, there's not even a throwaway line. Uh, well, yeah, because, um, to, I mean, later on, because the reason why I'm almost part of the film anyway is because Aquaman needs help, essentially, yeah. um, and, and, and he's like, oh, well, we can get Orm, and it's so funny, because, like, you could get Superman, you could get Batman, <laughs> Batman you yeah, Orm. that's what I said when we watched um, it as well. <laughs> you get all those guys. the point of him don't... getting him out is, like, oh, we need him to establish contact with these criminals, and I don't even, I don't even know why the black... It's uh, thin. What, it's why thin. he's even part of this, why they know, I don't know, I'm just so confused by everything. But yeah, you could have just asked Batman, he could have probably given you the information you need easily. The best reason they have is, oh, well, Orm interacted with Black Manta, like, a couple of times, yeah. which um, is something, but, again, compared to just getting Superman to come and, and help you out, you figure that Superman would have a perspective on Earth suddenly getting nah. dramatically hotter, but I nah. guess not. Because because what we're what we're later finding out is like the nature of the climate change that's happening in the the DC world here because of <laughs> what Mance is getting up to is dramatic. We're talking like a dramatic increase in the uh, oh, yeah. temperature very 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 quickly. And they provide a very bad explanation as to why they didn't find him <laughs> before. <laughs> yes, they do. Though we get <laughs> we get a little bit of um uh I guess important exposition. Willem Dafoe was in the first movie if you remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Volko. Uh, he got killed off screen by this dead plague. By plague, He's yeah. Dead. <laughs> dead by plague. He's dead. Bye. Yeah. You're not in the movies. Goodbye. I thought it was so funny where he's like, man, I miss him. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <Yeah>. So <laughs> crap. <laughs> that, that was he a was whole a character. Friend. Oh, well. And he was a good friend. <laughs> I I guess to, to recap, the whole council scene feels like we're doing a complete reset of essentially what was happening in the first mm-hmm. film. The way that it was presented was that Orm wants to become Ocean Master, brum, 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 and in order to do that, he needs to get, like, you need four out of the seven kingdoms to be on your side, but there's only six that are actually around because the seventh one, you know, is, is gone or whatever. Um, and then he gets Drago, so that's two. Then he kills the king of one of them. Uh, so then he gets three, and then he goes to war with the um with the the crab people to get four. But there was no mention of anything of an internal council like at Atlantis that was relevant mm-hmm. for making these decisions. It was all about diplomacy with the other kingdoms. But they're yeah they they oh, changed their mind. They 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 were they were always there. They were just never brought up because it turns mm-hmm. out they fucking agreed with him. 
Well, it's, it's even it's even what uh, Arthur said. It's like they didn't tell me about this when I became king. It's like it's because I hadn't fucking written that down yet. <laughs> because they were on exist. Orm's side. They were just oh, like, yeah, I, I kill guess him. I guess that's it. We we just have to accept that they were on Orm's side. Um, I mean, but, uh, it seems as if they they are. They seem to be on Team are. Orm. They basically say they yeah. Basically, they say we gave Orm the power to go to war with the surface. So that's that's the only way we're going to reveal ourselves. And then. Then Arthur's like, God damn it, I'm not succeeding here. And then he mm-hmm. just, he goes home to whinge to his dad about how, how yeah. much he hates his job. Fuck <laughs> sucks, man. Home, like, oh, it sucks. I don't like being king. You know, I that's that sucks. Um, and then he mentions, because this is this is the last time they mention Willem Dafoe, he's like, Ah oh, man, Willem Dafoe, he told me to bring the land and the sea together, but half of Atlantis, they still want to go to war with the surface. God damn, what, what's a man to do? And they never talk about him again. That's it, he's done. Out of the picture. Bye. Um, and then Boba Fett gives like a really lame cliche, like emotional, motivational speech about like, ah, don't give up, you know? You don't give up. Yeah, didn't he do start that. with like, can't save them all, son? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you should let the children on the bus die. What is, what's Wait, what? No, there was another one. Yeah, I know. What's the deal with, like, dads of superheroes <laughs> in the DC world? Just being <laughs> like, you know, you can't help everybody, pal. <laughs> Don't <laughs> even try. <laughs> I, I'd have to listen to it again, because I, I forget what he says. I think late... I Yeah, I don't know. I... Well, the big thing he basically says is don't give up. That's like, that's the gist of his speech. Yeah. Don't give up. That's, that's what a hero should do. Don't give up. The script was on the table some... and he read it and he was like, yeah, that's good enough. Yep. And they were like, all right, is that my take yeah. done? Can I go home now? All right. That's, see you guys. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, hey, I get to do more than I did on my own fucking show over at Disney. So oh, I guess I'll just <laughs> oh yeah. The, um, sorry. The line is like, sometimes the most heroic thing you can do is not give up. Yeah. That's Which, what I mean. How, yeah. How generic is yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I guess. You know, it's like I, I just, don't disagree. But it's just, it just like doesn't it doesn't generic. feel suitable no, for this story I mean, anyway. Some, like Oh yeah, it, it's a it's Aquaman as a like, character in this um, doesn't come across as someone at the end of the person? like rope sort of thing. It comes across as like an annoying little kid who's like, Why doesn't anybody do whatever yeah. I say to do? Yeah, I wanna go on my bike beautiful. and go vroom vroom yeah. vroom. Yeah. I would be petrol. afraid if he was at a bar that I was also at, and I'd just be like, oh, yeah. please don't look at me, don't notice me, just don't notice me, don't... Like, this is the beginning scene in, like, an Equalizer film, and I'm just like, don't, don't, don't come close to me, just get away, go. Yeah, pulling um, out a line, like, sometimes the most heroic thing you can do is not give up or whatever, it just feels like it should be in a different movie, if at all. I still would want to revise it, it feels like a... A strange it's statement. Not, <laughs> yeah, and, and we need yeah, to tie right. it when... to Aquaman in a more firm and clear way, instead of just generic hero there's, there's never a time in this whole movie where I feel like he's close to giving up. Never. No, because he loves killing. So like He, he really loves much. killing, yeah. yeah. He really does. He's got a lot in common with Manta on that one. Speaking of whom, he's he's got like this ancient submarine that Ugh. he's now piloting around. Um, from this, the ancient submarine that he retrieved from, uh, the ancient ruins of that kingdom in Antarctica. Mm. Um, and they, they enter it into, like, stealth mode, which is undetectable by, like, Atlantis, because their submarine's got, you know, like, not Atlantean tech, but underwater tech. Um, and then Mansa's like, all right, Dr. Shin, you gotta get ready with a, with a, a big gun. Bear that in mind, this big gun is really important throughout the mm-hmm. whole film. Um, and then, and then for the bad guys. Can I, can I, I just say. say that I don't know if there has been a cooler submarine sort of design since the one in Atlantis? Oh, the, Do you the remember that? What was it? Atlantis. What was it called? Yeah, the Ulysses, right? I can't remember actually. I, I it was. Yeah, I don't know. Remember it had that that orange like cockpit at the front that was a sphere and even the little mini subs that came out of it had this cool you know similar uh, aesthetic to them but this one looks really lame and generic and not um, at all memorable it looks a bit gooberish it looks uh looks a bit like kind of like a goober i, I think it's it's like it's trying to look a bit like a hammerhead shark a little bit with like these two sort of protruding oh yeah yeah on the sides. And they, they show us the bridge and it's like completely empty and huge it's like uh, <laughs> it's a huge it's, empty space and it really annoys me because you i don't think you would ever do this with a submarine because submarines space they're very cramped yeah, exactly. normally 
but this is some reason. reason they decided to to build a bridge like oh we need so you, you we put a warehouse here and then we put something on top on the front there goes the controls and then we put the wheel right in the middle of the warehouse and i put some some windows and then off we go well it's because it's, it's a big ancient Atlant not atlantean but atlantis adjacent submarine that's why they're well so then i hope they have redesigned since because it's a very stupid design <laughs> um, we get another exposition dump here. This is the one where, uh, Dr. Shin, he gets, like, a little tape recorder, and then talks to it, but talks to us, relaying a whole bunch of fucking information. A lot. He says a lot in this, this big exposition dump. To summarize, he relays that, um, Mantis is using ancient technology to infiltrate a bunch of locations, uh, under the sea, to retrieve a power source called Oracolcum. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, yeah, they, they, they call did. it Oracalcum. I've always Oracalcum. thought it was Oracalcum. Oracalcum. I don't know. It's it's actually um, well, it's based it's on the, uh, the 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 actual the Oracalcum, which is just yeah. a, it's it's not actually a huge deal. It's like a it is it's either a gold copper alloy, a copper tin, or copper zinc brass, or uh, or or just kind of like a mixture of metals that we don't know exactly what it was, but it was just like an older metal that was but it's used. it's kind of tethered to the myth of Atlantis, right? I guess it is in this world. Which, um, no, I mean in our world, in, in real ours? life. I didn't know. Life, um, that, I yeah. thought it was... Uh, I had um, no idea, so... Uh, but, and, and he, he continues, and he notes that Manson now knows information he couldn't possibly ever... Like, he couldn't know it. It's just, he knows about these locations, he knows about this, um... I... Going forward, I, I call it like flame fuel, um, the oracle because it's kind of a mouthful. Um, but he knows where the flame fuel is. Yeah, knows, it's like, like um, they're like fuel rod, like radioactive fuel rods is how they treat them. Like if they melt down much. or get destroyed, they're like they're, they're horrific f oh, for the environment and people and stuff. Like they're dangerous and unstable. I do want to know as well? It's so in because I was like, but I was like half paying attention both times. So I got the full movie, I swear, in my head. But <laughs> the uh, <laughs> when. And science man says, uh, this is all paraphrasing, but it's something like, wow, it's just so amazing. He's like having a monologue he's reading it. He's, he's doing a little tape recording thing, like like day 300 yeah. and whatever. And he's like, it's amazing. These machines we've discovered from ages ago are still working incredibly well. And we need to steal all of the, the juice from Atlantis, but it's super secure. We have all this information because our leader speaks to like some spooky spear. It's crazy. It, like he just sums up the whole thing. It's just like, this is Why so not? shit. <laughs> It's terrible. It's incredibly clunky. And I mean, it feels like surely when he's like, man, he, he grabbed like this, this big like trident thing. And ever since then, in the DC world, he's had access to information he couldn't know. It's like, wouldn't it be fairly intuitive, especially if you've been with him for like several months to conclude that he's probably communing with some magical entity in this world? And it's that certainly that he's compromised and you have no I mean, idea what's happening. Surely. He um but he, he has he like five moments in the film where he's like, "Are we the baddies?" <laughs> Pretty much. And they always, they just um, get funnier as they go along. It has been yeah, considering the the time skip, it does it it raises a lot of questions uh, about this guy's five involvement in this guy. plan. And which which by the way, over the course of this fine months, he would have seen him deliberately polluting, like deliberately polluting. That's the plan. That's just, the plan that, that they it, have. That's the yeah. plan for months. The plan is to just... pollute the world and kill humanity, essentially. Pretty much to melt enough sea ice to to free a spooky skeleton man from. Yeah, uh, from I wonder what lies he could have possibly told the scientist dude to be like, no, 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 we're not trying to destroy this. this. No, no, this we're not polluting the earth. No, we're yeah, we're the we're doing the thing that the especially because they have like a big evil volcano and everything. I'm like, oh, yeah, which I don't know. This volcano, like... <laughs> by the way, makes there's no way they haven't noticed. It's Something's the most awful evil yeah. volcano ever. It's hmm. almost it's like it's, it's a little step down from Mount Doom. Especially with the Justice League volcano. and Batman being a thing in this universe. It's like, oh, there's a there's some weird climate change going on. That's that's what pretty it, unnatural. Oh it is what's about this as, volcano um, over there with green smoke coming out of it. I should probably check that out. <laughs> about as noticeable as Minas Morgul when it fires its laser. It's like how do, how is this getting missed? And it's like, oh, you see they have protective Radar things. You're like <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I mean you can see it with your eyeballs. Yes. Right. Uh -uh. 
where we're at, by the way, them infiltrating uh, Atlantis, the octopus, the drum playing octopus. You remember him from the first movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, Best Fringy, character. I sure don't. <laughs> oh, oh. But that there sounds was, great. The drum playing octopus. He was one of the funniest parts in that first movie. Just that visual of a drum playing octopus. That was kind of amusing. He's sitting there. He's just sitting there and he notices, um, he notices the submarine and then he, he goes off and this alerts Atlantis. Creates a big action scene, gets them on Mantis' trail. So if the octopus wasn't just chilling out in this area, the whole film doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen if he's here, if he's not there. Right. Isn't that funny? It's just like, <laughs> oh yeah, an octopus was just sitting there. He saw this and then he went and got help. The whole movie happens because of this. <laughs> Otherwise, they would have just gotten in and out without anybody noticing. But um, I mean that they, they they go in and as we were mentioning, they're retrieving flame fuel. It's like this glowing green stuff in these rods, and they're 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 grabbing it with these big. They're piloting like kind of like octopus, like squid, retro like mini octopods, submarines. Yeah, with like they they've got like four or five legs, and they command them around, and they swim by. Yeah, like the tentacles. They make it go. They could be like arms. They're very mm -hmm. multi-purpose appendages. Pretty much, and they're using those, but um, as they're getting it, the alarm goes off, and Mantis is like, oh shit, alright, well, I guess we gotta get going, um, and so the submarine charges towards Atlantis, and you remember in the first movie how they have those big cannons up on the walls, which is really oh, funny. Oh, a lot right? of them. It's the ocean, you can just, like, come from the top down, you don't have mm. to go past the walls, you can just go way, 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 way higher, and then come down. But they guess, had yeah, and remember in the first movie, which no one does, but uh, remember in the first movie, all of the incredible mm -hmm. armaments and cannons and weapons that Atlantis used to stop them from escaping, right? Yeah, it was uh, hilarious. It was nonsense. It was one of the most, like, CGI nonsense, what are the stakes, this is madness kinds of things I've seen in a superhero movie. It was, it was nuts. Yes, it was. Um, and all they those, used yeah considerably less force on this uh big submarine but uh it doesn't work because it got shielding and it, it stops the uh it stops the lasers from these cannons penetrating and then they fire this cannon that they mentioned before the the big gun it's this big sonic cannon it blasts the uh the the command post it deafens the atlantean soldiers and then the gun just drifts down and starts blowing up all of the ships. <laughs> yeah lined up at the front gate of Atlantis just blows them all up so that's a whole bunch of innocent people <laughs> like so yeah, this is up. yeah a lot of uh, a lot of soldiers just doing their duty to protect Atlantis and protect the world a lot of innocent people like after the end of this nonsense sequence many many people probably thousands Thing of is, people are dead yep. there is this film still has a lot of wanton like destruction uh, which is very in keeping with the first film, but it doesn't quite match it because it doesn't have the big finale um, that's, yeah, that's of true. this massive war between all of the sentient beings of the underwater world and then a a Aquaman just like mercilessly slaughtering <laughs> all of the people that he's going to eventually be leading, who I guess maybe they did hold a grudge over that. There's slightly less wants and destruction in this film, but it's still insane. <laughs> There's still so much collateral damage. Yeah. It's wild. Oh, so if I, I remember correctly, explosions. this this submarine only has this gun. That's the only weapon Pretty they much. have. They only, they I don't only remember ever use anything it. else. They never use any other weapons. Yeah. But th this big sonic cannon seems to basically be instant loss for Atlantis whenever it hits them. It's like an instant game over. Knocks them Which out completely. Shouldn't be, but, you know, because there's like a whole city versus one submarine. But, you know, that's fine. It's I mean, not fine, yeah, but you know what I mean. Because, <laughs> I mean, you would think that if you have, like, a million ships that are flying in to try yeah. and attack the submarine, that if it can only fire the cannon in one specific direction... Exactly. ...that you should be fine. It's over. Um, I mean, a little, like... Uh, there were planes in World War II, like, that were flying around that had more weapons on them than this massive yeah. submarine <laughs> <laughs> that had, like, two guns instead of just the one. Maybe um, they could... Enlist the help of animal sea life to uh, to attack Die. the the not ship. Oh. <laughs> that would no, never that would, work. That would never, never. work. That would, okay. That would that would not work. You um, pretend they like can just get like seven thousand whales and sonar <laughs> them out of existence or something. Oh, I mean, Aquaman's not even here yet. It's uh, it's Mera and uh, 
Nicole mm-hmm. Kidman, Atla- Atlanta, Dude, Atlanta, this, Atlanta, Atlanta. I think it's yeah. Alana, yeah, or something. But watching her, Nicole Kidman, I haven't seen her in a while. Possibly, literally, <laughs> like the last time I saw her was in Aquaman one. But seeing her riding whatever the hell she's riding and being like, "We gotta do the things. We gotta get in there." I was just like, "What are you? What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, she's. They're riding. They're riding like mechanical shark motorbikes underwater. That's what they're writing. She's like, um, we, we gotta take cool. out the bad guys. You get her action sequences. It's like, this is Nicole Something Kidman. Something that was bad. really notable in this scene is when she yelled out, like, oh no, they're like cutting through the market. I was like, man, your voice sounds old. Yeah. Your voice, <laughs> it, it, you can't yell. You, like, when you yell, it really sounds like old lady you voice. Know, I mean, she looks, she looks really good for a woman in her 50s. Um, yes. Uh, her, I, her, her old lady voice was very, like, <laughs> funny. It's just wacky to me because um, video games. when superheroes were on the big rise, I think a lot of actors were like, I ain't get anywhere near that. That's some goofy shit. Mm-hmm. But now we're in like the reverse time where loads of people will just jump into it immediately because their agents are telling them it's a sure thing, loads of money, get in, get out. Yeah. So it's just like so much so much talent that you see get thrown into these films and they just do goofy nonsense and then leave. And you're just like, okay. Well, yeah, because they don't, they don't use her really at all. And uh, like, she's in it a little bit, but they don't really give her much material to actually like leverage yeah. her capacities as an actress. But uh, no, they just got her riding around and then doing a, an action scene. Um, it was mentioned before a few times, I think by Metal and uh, Rags, but this film is like laden with CGI. It's like, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if every single shot had some CGI in it. Uh, it looks the budget a, for this was really what like two hundred something million. Yeah, something it like looks, two hundred million. It it looks like it. It looks just nothing's real. Everything's fake. Um, <laughs> it's very difficult to like. It it's it's everything combining together. It's the wanton destruction, the lack of care for the destruction. No one treats it seriously. No characters except one is really all that serious. Um, it's it's just like a nonsense movie. Isn't and, that, um... I think it's kind of funny that like zero to twenty million budget, it's a, you know it's a gamble. You could get anything. Twenty to like let's say this is seventy. It's like ooh, this might be really good looking. Seventy plus, it's like well now we're back to bad looking again. <laughs> uh, like... And then, well, until you get to like four hundred million plus, and then you get Avatar to like visual effects that are absolutely the best of recent years. Like, yeah, I, I mean incredible visually, but you know, but. <laughs> that script though, huh? Mm-hmm. It is yeah. funny though, the idea that more money means that it starts to look worse because they just liberally yeah. have visual effect shots all the time and they're not careful with their shots. They, they just figure it's like, well, we got all the money to mess with, so we shoot the whole film on a green screen. Um, I mean, they, they had some practical sets, clearly, but I mean, there's so much CGI and it's not it's not convincing at all. Um, like in this fight where it's like, yeah, look at, look at, look at, uh, Nicole Kidman having a big old fight with the, with the, the guys trying to steal the, uh, the flame fuel. And then she basically stops him, gets hit by the cannon and it knocks her out of the fight, I guess. But like, it's kind of weirdly framed. Like she gets hit with it. She falls off, but then she like grabs onto her motorbike anyway, but we never see her again for the rest of the action scene. She's just out. He's done. Out of sight, out of mind. She got paid. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I guess she just decided that she didn't feel like doing it. Um, like it's right? weird. Like, yeah, you right? wonder. Like, okay, did they shoot you. a whole bunch of stuff for her, and it just uh, never made this it is in? Or... Scene, yeah, the impression was probably cut down. Um, because... I wonder if he had like a lot of scenes with uh, Mara. Well, so again, what you Maybe. notice is that if there's a scene where she's in it. She just she she says way less than you would expect someone mm. to say when they're in a scene, you just expect someone to talk more than once or twice in a scene. Um, and you expect to see, but like whenever it's a scene that she's in, she just, she might say one or two lines and then she's kind of there and does something. And then everything races by really quick. I get the impression that this is another action scene that got dramatically, um, messed around with, uh, in terms of the edit. Uh, but she's, she is in it. (laughs) Um, she's, Chase the uh, Black Manta, who like sort of enters into this underwater highway. You you're, think about it like um in in Finding Nemo when they're using the current, like the turtles are using the current as a. Uh, like I was a thinking about Coruscant, where everyone's kind of got their like little lanes to go through. Yeah, oh, just space lanes in general, like. Uh, it's yeah, but it's, yeah. I know what Free means. There's like a it's the, yeah. Dream. Yeah, yeah. It's a it makes them go super fast. Um, because they're flying it's through. It's epic. It's Ma- super cool. Like, it is, it is epic a, though. Yeah. 
Mance is like, I'm gonna kill more civilians and just starts like firing at, <laughs> at vehicles that are in front of him. So there's a bunch of explosions. She like he he gets out of the jet stream, she dodges the explosions, gets out, uses her um the first instance again of reminding you, wow, she is like ridiculously overpowered. Um she's, she's got, more like water magic or something. Her, yeah, she like controls water. She can like make it move around and, and like fire it and it's it's really she single handedly like takes down his his um his vehicle when it looked like yep. um Nicole Kidman was having a harder time with it, mm. and uh, it looks like Aquaman has a harder time with it later in the film. But she just instantly takes it out. Her powers are like ridiculous because she's as strong basically as Aquaman. She can't talk to fish, but like this power is super OP. Um, yeah, she uses it and good. immediately destroys his ship. Uh, he crashes. She starts trying to like break in. Um, and he's like, oh shit, puts on his helmet, which I find really funny, because if it took him, like... They never show him putting on the helmet. Yeah, he they, has no uh, helmet, she punches they, uh, his glass, good and then they do his show it. They do show it. Oh, like, they do? Very, very, very quickly. It's like, oh, you, blink, okay. you blink and you miss it. Oh, you will miss I thought it was it. like it's a Batwoman quick. thing, where they never show her putting on the helmet. They always cut away when she takes it on, or <laughs> uh, moves her arm to apply she's putting it on, because, yeah. you know, of all the hair and shit they'd have to do. Well, it's just, it's just funny, because, in, like... If he, if he was a little bit slower, if he was one second slower, he would have been killed by the decompression of the glass, like, shattering yep. and getting removed. But uh, how it's fearful fine. of a villain he is. He got it just in time, uh, yeah. and then fires a laser at her, uh, and then fires a laser at some other guys, and that, that like, knocks her out completely. She's basically it makes you wonder dead. why he didn't have that fucking thing on anyway. Like, he's in a um, battle. Yeah, why oh, not? Like, comfort, you know? Why wouldn't you just, especially when it has that crazy laser, which that laser appears to be more powerful than it was before, because remember, oh, yeah. in the first film, uh, Arthur tanked a hit from it, and it burned his arm a little bit, but in this case, it's like it's completely scorched, like her torso. Upgraded with zombie tech. Um, zombie I, tech! I guess so. Even though they say that it's actually a downgrade, because this isn't his power suit. This is like a just sort of a regular suit that I guess can withstand the pressure of being that far below the ocean. But yeah. I guess what maybe a fantastic he fantastic can... suit. <laughs> it's uh it well, I guess maybe it's his muscles uh, can withstand a bit. Yeah, but uh Whoa. Dr. Dr. Shin's like, um, come on, we got we gotta get the fuck out of here. But um Mansa really wants to kill Hackerman and his entire family. So he's like, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm a I'm a kill me a dead mermaid, which is kind of a weird sentence. I mean yeah. how can you kill a dead thing? I that guess is he's odd, good that at is... killing. Arthur's going to be he's... jealous how good he is at killing. Uh, a little bit, yeah, because he, he gets out and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a killer, and he's about to throw his trident, but then uh, Aquaman miraculously showed... If he was one second later, that would have been it. She would have been dead. Uh, classic. Uh, but he showed up just in time to stop, stop him. And then Black Mads is like, oh, Aqu Aquaman, you, you stole your brother's throne and you stole his woman? Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> What such a wacky such fucking a... what? <laughs> he's he really a good wacky dialogue. Clown man, he's <laughs> such a clown. He's more of a clown than he was first time around. Um, that pissed off a uh, good old Aquaman, and then he's like, "I'm gonna get you," but Manta just hits him really hard and sends him flying. So he is he is super strong. Um, he is super duper strong. Um, which we later find out is because of the uh the trident and that that big deal he's making with the the flimpy skeleton man. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, he fires a laser at, like, an underwater train to derail it. So he's like, see, Aquaman, you gotta go save those people. Um, uh -huh. and Aquaman, he does really want to kill... Very green goblin um, of him. Oh, man, if only he had fish, he could ask to do that for Someone him while he that, pursues but... the other ones. Well, I mean, the countless <laughs> other fucking people that should be available right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Police, law enforcement. Um, yeah. It seems like what we're meant to conclude is that, sure, all of the Atlanteans can, like, breathe underwater and swim around and stuff, but they're not as strong as, like, Aquaman or uh, his family, that they're, like, super-duper strong. Um, so I guess that means that he's, like, the only person who can just grab it and try to slow it down, like a Mr. Incredible Stone Maneuver. Um, still a lot of massive destruction. I gotta imagine all the people inside of that train what about, are still um, in a lot of trouble. What about Dolph Lundgren? Uh, I think he's super strong as well. Um, okay. I think as long as they're, like, royalty, they're, they're super-duper strong. But if you're just a normal guy, then tough shit. Did Nicole Kidman dude. get knocked out, or...? Uh, it, maybe we have well, like a... remember she got she got hit by the cannon. She grabbed onto her motorcycle, and we never see her for the rest of the action scene. She's just <laughs> out, but she could do it presumably because she appears to be about as strong as there'd be. There'd be no reason to believe that Aquaman would be any stronger. If anything, you think Aquaman would be less strong because he's not totally Atlantean. He's half human. He's half. 
All of his yeah. power comes from being Atlantean. Um, it seems like the talking to fish is just some unique attribute that he got, maybe because he's part human somehow. That makes sense. Um, well, we can talk yeah, to yeah, fish, yeah. so. <laughs> they just don't talk do to it all the man. time. Exactly. And they can't understand us. But we do talk to uh, fish. Aquaman. We talk to fish, really. We do, <laughs> what, yell at them. I, I hope people do. Hey! Fish. Hey! Hey! Ah! Ah! Stop me! Swimming! Aquaman does stop the train, but again, lots of destruction because it's good for the trailer. Uh, that he swims after, <laughs> yeah. he goes after Manta, and he's like, I'm gonna get you, you fuck. And um, then they fire the cannon, knocks him out. They fire the cannon and a bunch of other like guys are pursuing them, knocks him out with explosions and shit too. Because uh, we need more explosions. Explosions are cool. <laughs> Don't think Free about people cool. dying. Explosions are um, cool. And then that, that knocks it out, cuts it black, uh, and then sometime later... The council is having a big old conversation because we're having some more exposition about the state of affairs. So it's just like the lady on the council who hates him basically saying that they want to strip Arthur of his power because he sucks and he's a loser and he's a cuck. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then crazy. everybody talks uh, to the council lady yeah, and they have Arthur. a big discussion. No, no, wait, it's only her. That's what she says. That's, no, that's, that's right. It. She, she <laughs> just declares it and we never... This is, this is about the last time that the council is relevant um, in the film. Yeah. We're just about to get past the point that we don't they care did, about them anymore. Yeah, they don't. They don't end up getting like a comeuppance or anything. But I guess they did they less play. than the bare minimum because normally you have like the council thing. Everyone's like no, 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 and then you have one evil guy. It's like ah, fuck the king. Me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he like turns a, out to be the bad guy who wants yeah. to subvert the political system and get power for himself. Yeah, yeah and here right. they just have the council ladies like ah, oh, the other one was right, and now we're going to get rid of you. That's the basic you. obvious thing to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they 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 didn't do that. So yeah, are, cool. why, why are they even in the movie, Fringy? Um, why? I think that they're in there to create a small amount of tension and drama during the opening portion of the film, mm. and to continue that through line of, ah, uh, see the land and the sea, they, they don't get along, but eventually they will. I think that's why they're there, and once we're back into, like, well, now we're doing the superhero shit, they're just like, alright, fucking get rid of them. Like, they're not, oh, they're not useful to us anymore. That made me think, we should title this EFAP, The Sea is Always Wrong. Oh my god. Damn. That's a well. It's got Boba Fett and oh wait, hold on, I'm mixing up. I'm crossing my. That was the <laughs> group surrounded by water. Is that what you were thinking? Group surrounded yeah, by I wrong. A group surrounded <laughs> by wrong. Um, that's kind of amusing. Yeah, because um, I was because I was thinking that the council, if they only show up to create a little bit of tension at the beginning, but there's no there, there's not going to be any resolution for it. They essentially disappear. It's just a waste to have them existing. They they don't serve a I think it's function a really. Um, I, it feels particularly potent because in the next scene, this is the last time they become relevant, but they're only relevant as like a thing that gets brought up that doesn't matter, and then we never talk about them again, and that's it. They're done. We don't care about them anymore. It's just funny to me that they would even have an element that uh just goes absolutely nowhere. Like shows how sloppy the script is, and probably how much the yeah. film got reshot. Yeah. Um, but you, you, just... you talk about that and how you know sloppy the script is, the reshoots and everything, but fully 100% mega CGI'd, all of them moving around, talking, they look different, they're in their chairs, Aquaman's there in the CGI room. Like, all this stuff is just raking up that bill for the yep. CGI cost, and it's I mean, all for it's all... nothing. It serves nothing. It's completely superfluous. It's all costs. It is. Every single, yeah. every single You're scene just is generating dramatic. a bill. I, it makes you think if there is there some kind of a con ooh, there's a conspiracy. The conspiracy <gasps> is that all the CGI guys they want to get all that work. And he's like, yeah, we're gonna get all this job. We'll never, we'll, we'll never out of money, run out of money. We'll make them think that they need us to make movies. And so they have a guy on the inside, or maybe they pay off one of the script writers oh to try God. and insert as much superfluous nonsense <laughs> CGI garbage into the movie as possible. And then so a that... giant squid attacked the building. Where did he come from? No, he's it got a seahorse now. He's got no. a seahorse pet and it drives no. him around. He's like, okay, oh, okay. All right, what is the purpose does it serve? No, it's going to be really cool. And then he also gets a squid later and it's like a spec oh, op God. squid. And he's a sneaky boy like Solid Snake. He needs a hundred lines like, of dialogue. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Oh, yeah. But, but we can't use a real squid. You, you got to give it to us, the CGI guys. We're, we like us, right? We, we make your movies happen. So yeah, we're going to do that too. And you might have to pay us double for overtime. Oh, it's all a ploy. All the squids and seahorses in the council of <laughs> sea people. It's all a ploy by big CGI. All of Damn. this literally makes yeah. sense. 
they uh a meeting happens between Arthur and uh Nicole Kidman and Drago. Um that's what I'm gonna call him as well. So that's sure. it's Drago. He's he's like he's a king of another kingdom. They're having a meeting and there's we get so much exposition again. Mm. Um but hey, well it's we need it for the incredibly the intricate and deep plot of mm -hmm. Aquaman the Lost Kingdom. Yeah, I love right. one of the things that they do in this scene where, you know, it's like Nicole Kidman's explaining, oh, this is what he stole. He stole the f flame fuel. And then Aquaman's like, oh, am I supposed to know what that is? It's like, ah, thanks, man. You've invited her to explain more uh. of it to you and us. That's really good. Uh, that's really good subtle writing. Well, if you have. <laughs> yeah, Aquaman <laughs> just says, what's that? And then they tell him. If it's you're really a fucking good. idiot really character, then you get away with a lot of exposition because he's just right. like, what? I don't understand. Aquaman's our fish out of water character, ironically. Ironically, yeah. They uh they explained that um Manta has robbed a bunch of vaults over the prime months, but I guess they didn't notice until now. Nobody nope. decided to check. They had no like inventory. They checked to just see, oh shit, there's a whole bunch of missing flame fuel. They only started looking into it now. <laughs> mm. They only started looking into it now when the way that uh, Nicole Kidman explains it, she says basically that this is an ancient fuel source that was really powerful, but also incredibly dangerous, such that we almost destroyed the world using it. So we stopped uh, and then put it in vaults. But they just didn't have anybody actually like checking to make sure that nothing had been taken. Um, well, I thought that I was confused when I first watched the movie because when they stole the fuel in that scene, I thought it was a completely separate place from Atlantis because it was so. Yeah, empty. same. Right? It's and like, then they uh, come out and they're in Atlantis. So, I'm like, oh, that's where they are. You're not I thought familiar this was with hidden the, away. So remember, in the first film, you've got the new, like, flashy, big, glowing city of Atlantis that was built on, like, the old ruins of Atlantis. And you see those in the first film as well. Like, that when they go further down, it's all overgrown and, like, these sort of ancient ruins that are covered in, um, like, seaweed and, and barnacles and stuff like that. So that's where they went, I think. It's meant to be, like, some vault from the old city. With not much in remember, terms of security on there. No, even, which I just, I, I love how movies can't like write. I mean, of course, there are the I good movies that write them competently, but like, you want, you know, you watch YouTube videos that talk about like, oh, here's, here's like the security systems that they have in place at like the Federal Reserve. Yeah, here's Fort Knox. You know? Here's why it's yeah, impossible exactly. to rob from Fort Knox. It and, can't and be done. The and then they sell you everything. Security, pretty much, of like how there is, there's like, a, a, a fail safe for a fail safe for a fail safe for a fail safe for a fail safe. It's it's yeah, like in all of this. And meanwhile, here it's just like yeah, it's just the there security is security so good. Camera. We're gonna make a documentary about the security, and it doesn't because matter. Know, you're never getting exactly. in. Exactly. We know that you can't do it. Um, but yeah, they, they, they yeah. Just, this they isn't like in. a movie heist. This is actual security that you could never get through. Yeah. They've uh, they've only noticed this now, basically, which I find really funny. If only they had um, more squid people everywhere to notice. They stuff. also, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's right. Because without that <laughs> octopus, they wouldn't have noticed if the if the drum playing octopus yeah wasn't there. We they just have, wouldn't have we, known. We should have saved the octopus everywhere. Yeah, just definitely. have one octopus just sitting there, just like, oh no, they're doing evil things. Let me go get help. Um, the what the thing that they basically explain here is that um. Manta is the main cause of global warming, um, and, and also the <laughs> underwater plague that's happening as well. Um, this would probably be the time to mention that um, this film, I believe, was based in part on a pitch by, um, by uh, Jason Momoa himself, um, and I'm guessing that this was his idea of like having the global warming thing be like a plot in the superhero film. The problem is, like, yeah. when you try to conflate... When you try... When you try to, like, conflate something that we're talking about in the real world, like a real world event caused by specific, like, th the nature of, like, the way that the world exists now, and then you try to inject it in your superhero movie with your mm. crazy sci-fi and magic shit, you end up with, like, this really fucking bizarre story that just yeah. seems embarrassing <laughs> of, like, yeah, Black Manta's causing global warming and we gotta stop him. It's fucking <laughs> silly. It's just silly. Like, Yeah, it is. Why he thought this was a, but the thing is, is that before the film was coming out, he was saying things like, "I, you know, like it's not like everything of mine made it in there and stuff." It's like, ah, all right, yeah, put some distance between yourself. Yeah, um, clever. Um, it's at this point that uh, Arthur suggests yeah, we should get Orm to help us, uh, and then uh, Nicole Kidman points out that this is untenable because he's being held. Uh, I believe they're the fishermen. It's like one of the kingdoms. 
Um, he's being held prisoner there um, because he killed their king in the first movie. Um, so they can't get him. He's a prisoner of an allied nation. They can't just get him. And then Arthur's like, well, I mean, I, I, I wasn't going to ask him. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go get him. Uh, and then Nicole Kidman points out, well, you can't. That's an act of war. Yeah. Um, his response to this is basically like, I'm tired of not getting anything done. You know, I, I want to <laughs> do something that I'm good at. That is his reason for doing this. And um, Nicole Kidman has no answer and it's over. He's won the argument. Um, all of the Aquaman points. won oh. the argument. Oh no, you can't say that. <laughs> Aquaman won the argument. All of the points. I just find it so funny. Like they make all the valid points of you can't just like go into an allied nation, break in, kill their guards, and extract a prisoner who committed regicide. That's not. You can't just yeah. do that. Yeah. Orm like, has committed yeah. some pretty serious crimes. Here. They killed yeah. Reginald. And also, it this did. this is the sort of thing that he does, Ugh. and then he has to, like, at the bottom of his arc. This is the kind of thing an impulsive king does without thinking of the consequences, and then the mm -hmm. film cuts him down for it, and there's terrible repercussions, a war breaks out, um, there's, there's political strife and violence because of it, and that's how he's like, oh, shit, like, the, my actions have consequences, because I'm the king, and I can't just do whatever I want, actually. And then Odin shows up, and he's like, you are a spoiled, rude boy and a child, and I'm taking away your powers. Go to this boring town on Earth. And Aquaman's like, oh, well, I don't want to go to the boring town on Earth, but I will. But, but the thing is, is that he just likes killing. He wants to go in and kill does, some things. And it's not even a means to an end, either. Aquaman just loves violence. He doesn't love being a hero. He mm -hmm. doesn't love, like, the thrill of being loved or the fame or anything like he's not like hercules in the hit Which, animated um, disney film he just seems to really love violence for its own sake action and Which, destruction this is the point where again it's worth reminding ourselves um that dc needs to they really should like look at the way that the characters have actually been characterized in the comics and just take that over because at that at this point it's more interesting if you do it the way that they were originally presented yeah than the shit you're doing now. I would be way more interested. It was kind of what I was thinking, particularly at this point. Is like, dude, I would way rather see the Aquaman movie where like Aquaman actually takes his responsibility seriously and has to try and figure out how to navigate through the politics of the underwater world while also dealing with the politics of the you know the surface and and doing it in a very like stoic and um and deliberate way. That would be way more interesting than just this psychopath who's just like, I just want to kill things, you know. I don't like doing politics. Seems, I, I suck at it, so I just want to kill. He seems like a... Um, like, you can combine those, too. You can have a stoic, wise sort of man who's just legitimately super bored with politics and mm -hmm. is eager to take action, but he knows and kind of laments the fact that he can't. Um, you can have a character... It sounds like the character from the comic book would be really good to pair alongside so. somebody else to bounce with uh, to bounce off someone um and we I have think, someone um, who's maybe a bit more emotional and just a little bit different than him that he can talk to and explain things to and you know really give his perspective think, um, on them. you look at the 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 justice league as the way that they're more commonly characterized and it all starts to make sense superman is the leader the idealist the guy who wants to save everybody do everything the right way um then you've got like Batman, who's kind of like the 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 guy who's like responsible for bankrolling it. Realist. Um, he's kind of like the guy who, yeah, the more of the pragmatic, um, pragmatic member of the team. Then you got like Wonder Woman, who's very optimistic and all about like compassion and and you know kindness and everything like that. And you have someone like Aquaman, who's more uh, stoic and dutiful, but has a lot of obligations to Atlantis that are, like, really important to him that can potentially come into conflict with the goals of the Justice League because of their obligations on the surface. Green Lantern is, like, your connection to the cosmic yeah, he side. he might not even be king. Don't even have him be king. Have him be, have him be, like, maybe the, the second son. So he doesn't get the throne, but he feels like he has to impress or make his father really proud because he knows he's not going to be king because he's not the oldest son. He is sort of put in a position yeah, where he has remember, to find other ways to... Aquaman's mm -hmm. dad is Boba Fett, who is not involved in Atlantis. Boba like, he's, he's just a regular guy. It's Orm, whose, whose dad was like an underwater king guy. 
So I think I think the dynamic is fine. It's just that I just wish that he was like more serious. I I think I I want to see that more than uh Jess Momoa just acting like a sort of like clown guy. You can have a guy who likes to who is jovial by nature and he does like to tell jokes, but and and he does like to he maybe he's kind of optimistic and he's always trying to be upbeat and everything and he's a bit of a goofster, sure, but he knows when to be serious. Those characters yeah. exist. Mm -hmm. You I mean, even it's kind of when you do it like that. You can even have scenes where they where they have their council, and the one of, one person becomes like, ah, oh, he's just this goofster. He's gonna be easy to deal with, and then he gets absolutely annihilated by him being serious because he does his duty. Mm -hmm. In uh, in Milan, right uh, when they sing about uh, a girl we're fighting for, and it's mm. fun, and we're we're having fun. Things are great. We're you know we're, we're reminiscing and wishing about people that we could meet, and everyone's smiling. And then they you know they cross over the hill and they see the battlefield remains, and they're like, oh shit! And the tone completely shifts, and everyone's very serious about it, and no one goes, uh, well that that just happens. You, you know we, we get an actual proper shift in tone. Well, what do I know? Uh, Nothing. Yeah. That's what. Nothing. Um, I'm just a guy. Like I, like I said, they are convinced by Arthur's arguments and decide to help him break out uh, Orm from an allied kingdom. Um, what are Arthur's arguments? Remember, his argument was, I want to kill. Um, help me not oh, getting oh, caught. Oh, okay. that's, that's his argument. Oh, yeah, that's and, true. He's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> right. And just help me do it without getting caught. Help, help me get away with my crimes. Um, and they decide, okay. And they okay. give him a stealth suit. That uh, makes him invisible, but only for a short period, I believe. It's like a minute or something, which seems like, why wouldn't it just be able to run for longer than that? But okay. And they give him the octopus, the drum octopus. Yeah. Topo. That's his name. I'm just going to keep calling him the drum opt octopus. Cause it's Topo's funny. a fine name. I like Topo. I like the name, but I like drum octopus. That feels like it's just, you know, it's like, that's who he is. He plays the drums and he's an octopus. Mm. What if someone so called you Podcast Bird? Yeah. <laughs> How would that's you feel funny. about that? You know what? Yeah, I think you might have convinced me. So yeah, so far, <laughs> he's, he's going with them. Damn. Um, Get something wrecked. that they say, by the way, is uh, they're talking about the fisherman. And <laughs> we like, all know he's special agent octopus anyway, so <laughs> you have to call him special agent octopus because <laughs> we got these or big secret shots agent. Of the secret agent octopus. <laughs> um, they they show uh they show us the prison he's being held in. It's like this big underground labyrinth in the in the sahara um and and he's being guarded by these monsters is it the place um, from the first movie i think it's it, it i it looks it's similar. uncanny that it's it like looks so similar hmm. it does but i don't i remember vivid imagery or imagery from the the first uh movie not vivid imagery but and i'm thinking like isn't this because this isn't where wonder woman jumps down in the snyder cut this is no. where Aquaman goes underground under the desert and does the thing there, whatever he does. It's some nonsense. It doesn't matter. I think it's, I think it's meant to be similar because they 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 explain that because remember in the first one they're like, oh, it's before before the Sahara was a desert. Um, which again to remind you in the real world, I'm pretty sure that the last time that the Sahara was like underwater, hundreds of thousands of years or millions. Well, I, I think the Sahara goes through a cycle of becoming green and then becoming a desert, but not sinking under the ocean. <laughs> but, but whatever. I got no clue. Here. Like, maybe, maybe we're talking, like, Pangaea stuff. That's what I'm talking, like, way before. Way before. Ever. A long time ago. Mm. Um, but, but in any case, uh, something that they say about the monsters, because Orm's there and he, he's looking pretty haggard. And there are these monsters guarding him, and uh, Drago says they drink blood instead of water since the Sahara became dry. I find this funny. Huh. Mm -hmm. are, are they the bad guys? They're not really, but it, you're making them sound like they are just the bad guys. They're, they're trying really hard to essentially justify killing them, um, even yeah. though fundamentally they can't get past the point that these are the terms by which they agreed that Orm would be like imprisoned. They agreed to this yeah, with their allied that's what kingdom. I was... It's like, oh, you you're cool with them just torturing them, uh, torturing him, by giving him like I don't know, like a spit of water so he doesn't die. I guess like, they are Whoa, okay, okay. being tortured, yeah. But then alternatively, it's like I don't know if you made a deal with like some kingdom to have somebody be in prison for their crime and they got guarded by a bunch of like I don't know tigers. I don't know that that just I don't know that you can just kill all the tigers, you know, <laughs> like mm. I just take that person because like, well, I mean, they're not people. <laughs> it's like, oh. 
but you agreed. You agreed. Well, I know how we feel about this movie. Feels about the crab people and all that. It's very like, oh, you're not a human, so fuck you. Yeah, you don't. Something I don't appreciate, quite frankly. It's um. By the way, they play the Orm theme like about twice in in the span of twenty seconds here of him sitting there haggard. They're just like, they play it. Oh, look at Orm. He has a beard. It's really funny. It's so funny just that they play the theme. Every time he shows up on screen, it's like, yeah, look, look out, he's it's Orm. It does he's feel like uh, something, some, some meeting happened after all the drama, and they were like, Orm, or rather, Patrick Wilson, you're, uh, you're going to be our guy for this can you, movie. <laughs> yeah, can you, can you like? Can, oh, I thought you, you meant Pat- Patrick Willems there for a second. I was like, what the no, fuck? <laughs> <Will. He's> like, <laughs> like, what is he? That was. Uh, he's he's like really good buddies with James Wan, right? He's in like all of his films. Yeah, the. Countless collaborations, so makes sense. He's in Insidious, right? And uh, The Conjuring. Yes, though I have a, I've seen Insidious. I don't think I've seen The Conjuring. I might have. He's in The Conjuring for sure. Yeah, him and uh, the lady in Godzilla. Mm-hmm. The, the, Vera Farmiga, right? Party. Yeah. Um. So I, I, Aquaman, he he busts in and he kills a bunch of the monsters. Which again, it's just, it's just, I've, it's meant to be a stealth mission. But, like, he, he just, like, comes in and gleefully, like, kills yeah. all of these monsters. And then Orm points out, like, what the fuck are you doing? You can't do this. This is, like, a <laughs> diplomatic disaster. And Arthur just, he doesn't care. He's a dude, bro. Is interesting. Instant characterization for Orm. Yes. That he says, what are you doing? This will be bad for Atlantis, which yeah, I Yeah, I want about. him to be king, actually. I don't know. He seems to be more qualified. It feels like the, everyone <laughs> in the audience <laughs> and the film agrees Orb should be king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He tried I mean, to kill especially... my world, and I still want him to be king of Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they play the Orm music a third time, by the way, as like Orm is shitting <laughs> on him. Like, you're a fucking loser. You're not my brother. Don't call me that. This changes nothing. And they're just like, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> that's the thing and, about and the. Uh, know, immediately when he said it's like, oh, he's going to call him a brother at the end. That's definitely going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the thing about this film, sort of, it like passes the uh, test of is it even a story? It's like, yeah, it's got those yeah. things. Like, look at the camera, be like, I would never do the th- other thing. And then halfway through the film, he's like, I, you know, I'm feeling that other thing. And then the end of the film, he's like, mm. I like the thing. Like, look at them. Yay. Look at that. Right. Um, they start their, they mount their escape very loudly and in the open when the whole point was that they needed to be stealthy. Um, I guess it's still a stealth mission if you kill everybody, so nobody knows that you were there. I guess that still uh, counts. In a sense. Because there's no witnesses. There's, there's no, no way they killed everyone who saw him, the king. No, there's just no way. There's no way. way. There's no way. That, but, but they, I mean, they, they give it their best shot. Uh, cause they kill a lot of those guys, they just kill so many of them, they just start blasting their way through, they knock some guys off of, like, their, uh, their, their, like, they're riding these weird, they've got, like, si- they're, like, skeleton monsters with big <laughs> floop mouths as, and as six legs. Metal point out, they, like they, they belong in Bloodborne, those things. They belong in Bloodborne, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, like a crazy. They boss. really want these guys to look as evil and, uh, killable as possible. Mm-hmm. Also, I think this guy's uh, doing their job essentially, upholding a deal to keep this prisoner, and yeah. they're just getting—they're all just getting killed. As I think I missed it earlier. What was the uh, explanation for these guys? Why are they here? They're like who are these people? They're, they're some people who stayed in the Sahara after it became dry, and so they started drinking blood and were monsters, oh. and they are guarding them. As part of the fisherman kingdom, which uh, is the guy that, the, who's king that uh, Orm killed in the first movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess That's no one found fact. them as well. They're very sneaky under, underground, I guess. I, 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 I just don't understand. Like, the Sahara is really empty. What, like, the, yeah. the idea of, like, yeah, they traded, they traded out water for blood. It's like, what blood? It's the fucking Sahara. There's not many There might be more there. water than blood. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, think, I, I don't I know if that actually is, is an improvement yeah. on their situation. Like, but, things with blood guess, typically need water, right? But I, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, so there's probably right. less I mean, blood than water. It's like this weird mm-hmm. thing in superhero stuff where they just have all these hidden civilizations on Earth. It's like, you can't just mm-hmm. stack them up all the time. It just gets really yeah. awkward. Yeah, like, I can give you one, but once we get to, like, the 17th Hidden Society, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit silly. 
Um, they uh, they ride these monsters uh, up to the surface. They like dig their way out and get up onto the surface and continue. I even see like what point there isn't actually trying to like break down the fight. It's just like oh yeah, big action set piece where they're fighting their way on the surface, punching the bad guys, and they very they stupidly aren't panicking at the notion of Orm getting close to oh, water yeah. when they should. Well, yeah, because what what is revealed is um like Orm collapses. He's looking he's looking really haggard and and thin. He collapses by the shore. Um, the monsters surround him, but then a wave washes over him, and he bursts out with a six pack. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, what I'm getting at is like they should be like never let him get anywhere. They knew that they they show earlier I when they to. you know they they don't feed him much water or whatever because they know it'll power him up to the point where they can't possibly defeat him. But they it's weird that they're all just like. Hmm. Is is he is he alive or is he dead? In this water, so, <laughs> like I said, there should be a guy who's like, get him out, 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 don't let the water get on him. Why are, uh, why is our prison so close to the ocean? That's I another thing that's a bit curious. <laughs> the Sahara is large. Um, <laughs> what? Very it's big. The Second largest than... desert in the world, I think. Uh, if you exclude the, it's the largest. I, was, I, I think Antarctica think is the largest, right? Is Antarctica actually is Antarctica. The Sahara is like enormous. Sorry, um, it is really enormous. If, uh, oh, I think you might be right that it, it's the largest hot desert and the third largest behind the Arctic and Antarctic. Uh, let me that let me consult. Right, yeah. here. It is the third Thank largest you. desert, smaller than Antarctica and the Northern Arctic. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the largest. It's it's enormous. It is. It's it is huge. Nine point two million square kilometers it's um i think it's like as big as the united states it's enormous yeah it's like the, the top middle. third of africa mm. pretty much um you could just put it in the middle of the uh put it in the middle of but of i mean Sahara. isn't it kind of like a missed yeah. opportunity i know that they're going for the payoff of like how cool is that he burst out of the water blah, blah, blah. but you know when he's like did you bring any water and Fucking Arthur's like, <laughs> I drank it, bro. It's too hot. Like, and it's like, uh, wouldn't it have been a thing for him to provide him the power to, you know what I mean? Like, there's a bit of sim uh, symbolic stuff going on there of him to provide. Yeah, like, here you go, brother. I yeah, like, like you know, he starts feeding him, and then he's like, you really, like, you know what this means? And Arthur's like, yeah, I know, like that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. And it's just like, no, we did, we we gave that up in order to do the whole like, oh, is Orm dead? Is, is he made it? Is he is he power? Yeah, six pack. Oh, boo 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 boo. Uh, yeah, we really get endeared to him. Again. We see him get powered up. Yeah. Well, and it also just kind of oh. is another knock against fucking Aquaman's character. I don't like him. He's not a good no, guy. What's there to like? Uh, he's very in keeping with uh, the DCEU's heroes of being yeah. psychos. Um, well, and the Orm is like, like one of the best heroes in the DCEU, and he's the villain from the first one. <laughs> like, especially in this film, he is uh, definitely rising the ranks. Yeah. Of uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously, this escape attempt is a bit of a that's a bit of a like. But but the thing is, is that he later says, "I'm going to turn myself back in after I'm done helping you," which uh, is really cool. He said yeah, because he respects the the customs and the customs. The yeah, that's what it was exactly. for. Thanks. Well, and I will say, like, this is where the film kind of changes for me a little bit from being just eh, to. Eh. <laughs> like the the back and forth between him and all. Thank God, someone else. Yeah, someone else is here. Well, and just what I I tried to push back on the idea that like Aquaman. I think um somebody on one of the streams I was on said like Aquaman was the worst film of the year or something. And just like it's not. No, no, it has actual it's story beats here and there, so it's already. I think in I, good shape. <laughs> I can accept it's it being shape. a contender. Like I get it, but at the same time, I just I just think it's the obvious not winner of the worst movie. No. Um. You know, there's some bits and bobs in here that are, that are appreciable, and we've really kind of gotten to the part where I can start talking about that here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because well, yeah, we're at the we're at the part where um, we're at the part where the film is the least butchered, um, yeah. in terms of the editing or story, which is Arthur and Orm going on their adventure together. Um, I do want to note, though, I guess Atlantean like physiology means that water equals six pack. I don't know. Sure. Like, you in the water and it's like ah yeah there you go look at how super duper strong you are but yeah they they they, they it's like oh high five and he tells him to fuck off uh orm and it's just like oh yeah okay let's run into the water hopefully none of the guys that are chasing after us notice who i am and hopefully none of them i i like the fact that like their plan is to go to a place where people are that are going to see them together and then arthur's like yeah you know they'll never know that i did this 
<laughs> I had a I had a stealth suit, and then of course there's just the logical deductions of you. Okay, so what happened? Oh, uh, we had all of our guards there. There wasn't like a big force. There wasn't a big force that came in to break out Orm. Um, it was it was clearly just one person. It's like, oh, who has the means and the motive to do that? Arthur, obviously, because he's a fucking superhero and it's his brother. So I don't even. Like, even if you decide, oh, well, we did stealth and we killed everybody who saw what we did, <laughs> they're still going to figure out it was you. How could yeah. they yeah. not? Like, where was the king during this time of Atlantis? Oh, he was mysteriously not present. And he showed up with right. the prisoner in this other place very shortly after. Hmm. And the prisoner and also, wasn't trying to get away from him. Hmm. Even without us having seen them together, it just makes sense that he would be the one to do it. <laughs> he has the means and the motive, but it's okay. It's all good. Uh, it's fine. I uh, though I again they, the the conversation they have afterward they get in their little boat uh their underwater boat and they're driving to the place that they need to go and they're just having a chat and they're arguing with each other um th th and and talking like oh man how could you have done this Arthur you fucking idiot like nobody's breached the walls of Atlantis in like a hundred years which I find funny considering that didn't you know, happen twenty first, minutes ago in, well in the first film <laughs> yeah. what he's saying, yeah. he's saying that's the point is that. This is the first time you suck, oh, Arthur. Yeah. Um, but again, I mean, you know, Arthur and Mera got out in the first movie. They did get past the walls. I mean, their ship got destroyed. But Maybe they, that doesn't count because it was a I misunderstanding. So. Getting out that's doesn't right. count. Trying to get in is Even it, though, that, again, that's what counts. Yeah. If you just come from above and come directly down, you'll get in easy. You don't need to. Yeah. Walls are worthless in the ocean. <laughs> you can just move above them. Yeah. Get like probably need a dome for that kind of scenario think, um, if you actually want to do because you just reminded me of like she was in the first one much more than she was in this one do you think there was a, the way they called for the me. reshoots she was like yeah yeah i'm on the way and then he's like oh no this uh we just need mainly patrick <laughs> well, so, <laughs> this is what i the impression that i get is that the idea was always gonna be that arthur and orm were gonna go on an adventure but that she would have been involved more in other things that were going yeah, you on. Can, of, you can tell there's some more, side jobs. There was more flesh on her scenes that have it's been all chopped out. I mean, she's even said that now, right, publicly? The, she said that in the uh, in the defamation trial uh, that, yeah. the, that her role got pared down. And then they said, well, no, we wanted... we This was something we decided beforehand. And the thing is, I could accept... I think, I think it's like the truth is in the middle of... They probably did decide beforehand that it wasn't going to be as big as the first time around, but I think they're bullshit. Like, everybody fucking understands what happened. You cut the scenes down. Yeah. Obviously, well, um, obviously it's, you cut them down. They did the arguably best possible thing, which is try and cut as much as possible without making it look like you've cut as much as possible. Um, I don't even know if I, because something that was interesting in the marketing is that they, they tried really hard to, like, pretend that she wasn't in the movie at all. They they had like that one shot of her in the trailer, and otherwise they didn't have her in any of the marketing at all. Yeah, I mean, just um, plausible deniability. Yeah. It's like Aquaman's movie, and it's it... about all, but it's I... you know, she's not as relevant to it. We also just, didn't have Boba I... Fett in the trailer that much. Ah, uh, he he's in it way more than she is. <laughs> um, he, everybody's in it more than she is, uh, and she's got third billing, which uh, uh, they didn't just... have the Sea King in there that much. Uh they didn't have much of Drago. I don't think he was in the trailer, so there's that. Um, yeah, there's definitely, I guess it's more so a matter of, like, does this appeal to anybody, where you do the middle road of, she's still in it, but cut down. Does that, is that sufficient to make people who'd be like, well, I don't want to see her in it at all, um, actually go watch it, and does that piss off the people who want to see her in it? I don't know what, uh, it, let's say they kept everything they had of her and just ran with it, versus they cut her out entirely, versus what we have right now. Who knows what generates the best box office numbers? I genuinely have no I idea. Um, I, well, I mean, the, the the fact is they were doomed when they uh, decided to go ahead. The thing is, is that they started Ooh. shooting the film before the trial, and it feels like the trial was the big thing that kind of uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of uh, kind of ended things. But I for still her think on the, on the career side, the, the, the they they just left like a, a crack in the door for plausible deniability, as in like you can't sure. like we, we she's in there, and you're like yeah, but yeah. it's like yeah, she's in there. In there. Well, I, I think I think it was even it, the thing that they just kept saying is Arthur and Orm, Arthur and Orm. That's it's a buddy, mm. it's a buddy adventure. That's that's what we're doing. And I mean, it is like the part of the movie where all of the actual like story is happening. So it's true. 
Uh, yeah, clearly, basically at the same anything time. about you. Well, just the only thing that kept people talking about this movie anyway. Like, was, it's uh, so dead. Was, was I, I do wonder if, it, yeah. what if it was beneficial to leave as much in there as possible just so people be uh, angrier about the film? Because like, uh, maybe that would have helped. I'm not sure. Because it's gonna, know. it's it's, it's faded already, uh, right? Like, pretty much. I mean, it's it's uh, it looks like it's gonna make less than half of what the first film made. Yeah. So it's already over. It's Jova before it began. It's Jova. <laughs> I mean, for the um, record, it, it might just make more money than expected considering everything else around it. Um, it looks like it's it's uh well again it's it's making more money than the Marvels, even though it had a worse opening, which means that it's got a little bit longer legs, but again, three hundred million or... off like two and a half weeks. Um is not it's not probably great. not going to be um, making that much more unless something unusual not. happens. Well, you got to remember the first film made more money in China than it made in the United States. Um, China was a big part of it, and I don't think that's the case this time around. It's just mm. doesn't like Western films haven't been doing as well in China anymore because uh, China's got like a more successful domestic market for films. Uh, like more domestic films, I mean, you know, Chinese films succeeding in China. So you know that that was like a big part of why the first film was successful. It did well in America, though. It just, you know, but this film, obviously, superhero fatigue is, uh, whatever it's called, appears so well and truly set in. Oh, I, something that's notable, and I don't want to point out problems with, like, the writing for Orm, because I, I don't, I, I, he's my favorite part of the film, um, <laughs> I don't, and I don't yeah. know if it's a problem necessarily, but something he says to Arthur is, like, you know, she should probably just, like, give up the throne for someone who knows what they're doing, and it seems like the implication is it would be him. Uh, but then, but he says he's going to turn you know, himself in as soon as it's over. So I'm curious as to like who he expects should oh, take over. Yeah, he has a point. perspective on who would take over. I could assume that it wouldn't be him. I feel like there might be, be multiple cut conversations between these two, unfortunately. Mm, which is a shame. It wow. is a shame. It's a, sh it's a shame to lose Orm. Arthur, I don't care as much. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit about him. He just brings nothing well, of value. He dra the protagonist really drags down the Aquaman film. Yeah, it's, it's it's all arguably um, fair, too, to say that Orm is a little out of character in this film because he was so shit in the first one in terms of being a one-dimensional like bad guy. Um, you could be like, yeah, but his time in prison has changed. It's like, eh, he's kind of just, he's just a better, well-rounded person in this because he <laughs> needs to be for the story to work better. Pretty much, because I want to send him on a redemption arc when in the first film he was just insane yeah. and very evil. Um, but I'm like, I'm motion go master. That's right. Bump, bump, What's man. up? Rise, Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, um, well, that was a good line. That's not a good. Yeah, that's a good line. It's all good uh, lines from Orm. Something that uh they that Orm says is that Mantor is more insane than he was before, which. I, I slightly I slightly disagree. He is more insane than he was before, but he was always insane uh, in the first film. He was yeah, a pretty he's crazy guy. Almost, <laughs> he's, I think he's slightly more crap in this one, but he's always been absolute crap. It's, uh... um, I'd say he's more crap in this one because they've gone down the angle of well, he's he is. I don't like it when the writing for the villain is just well, he's insane. So you know, he's insane. He got he's got flume stuff going on. Um, and like the mind control and stuff like that. So we can make him essentially make any insane choice that we want. Like yeah. his entire plan. He'll destroying do anything. The world. I think his arc is hilarious. The ending of it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the ending is really funny. It's representative of shot. like what the writers and the audience have to think about him as a character. <laughs> mm -hmm. He would come He's back in the third guy. one if they made it. Probably. Yeah. Um, uh, so th they're heading to a place called the sunken citadel. Uh, which which Orm relays. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, uh, I, I we we have a, a brief scene, um, the uh of them in the Black Manta base, which um they're in this base and they're kind of having a conversation where Doctor Shin's like, I'm I'm noticing that you're like kind of destroying the Earth. Um, what's what's the deal? <laughs> like, what's That's going on? That's basically man? true. Um, and, and Mantis just like ah, you know, whatever. It's, it's, you know, it's 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 just don't worry about. Did you say it. Mantis? Like, Mantis, <laughs> Manta, Man I think I was mixing up Manta and Atlantis. Mantis Wrong like, villain. don't worry about it. You it's know, cool. Uh, but if you one yeah. of my favorite word fuck ups that happens and nobody highlighted it, and I've seen the Lord of the Rings videos so many times, I don't know how I never noticed it, but it's behind. It's one of the scarier parts of Lord of the Rings. I can't like it could be Shelob, could be something else. I think it's Shelob. And someone says, uh, 
something like you know oh god i'd be pissing myself over and rag says i would i would be shitting in your ass like it would be so scary and i was like wait shitting in your ass like <laughs> i would be shitting in your ass <laughs> but I, I don't think you meant it that way <laughs> because who knows you, i don't know but it was funny a little easter egg you can find it good luck um I mean, there's there's really not much to be pulled from the the scene other than that Manta just doesn't care that he's destroying the world. Um, I guess he just doesn't care on the because he wants to kill Aquaman a lot, which um I don't know what I'm meant to do with that uh, as a villain that you're so obsessed with revenge that when you're told point blank you are destroying Earth that you're like eh eh you know it's like wh where do you plan on living after you're done with your uh, revenge? Under are, we, the sea. Go the are we just supposed to buy that he's just not a character once he's possessed? That's I think it. that's that's what I'm saying. I think we just have to accept that he's basically insane and and impossible to to reach. Um, now he is like completely irrational, yeah. which is just lame. I don't know what I'm meant to do with that with a villain. Yeah, and just he's got irrational. no angle in this. It doesn't seem to make any sense. He just wants revenge. That's it, and he's he's okay with uh, guess. helping free this guy. Which which is funny because the idea is you need to free me and then I'll give you the power to kill Aquaman. It's like, you seem sufficiently strong enough that you can kill him now anyway. Um, why would you even bother? Why wouldn't you just, why wouldn't you just kill him? You know? Cause like it's this, cause we, we get like sort of a gradient of him becoming more and more like possessed. Uh, here, it seems like he is still himself. He's just crazy. But then later in the film, it is literally just like the flume skeleton man speaking through him. So you figure at this point that he might just be like, why would I even help you? I can just kill him now. I got the, I'm got i super strong anyway, so I can just take him down. But I guess not. I guess he is really committed to, I'm going to help you out, pal. I'm going to yeah. get you out of there so you can give me the super duper powers. Um, and then hopefully nothing goes wrong afterward. <laughs> um, and then we're back with Arthur and Norman. They head into the sunken citadel Ooh. through another exposition dump. Uh, even Arthur is like, wait, why have I never heard about this place before? <laughs> But move on, keep going. But uh, they 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 rock up, and um, he he, he mentions it's like oh, it's a place where a lot of pirates like to hang out. Others oh, like, well, pirates don't like me, and Holmes like, yeah, I know they don't. And then they uh, they get put. Arthur gets put in chains, and um, I'm looking at that. I'm like, but he's really strong. Can he not break out of those chains? I guess um, it he was can. later. He yeah. does. Is it supposed <laughs> to be like a? Like a trick, I guess, you know? Uh, but they know that he's super duper strong. That he's, you know? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, the, king of the whole scene, when you look at it in retrospect, it's just like, what even was going on with all of that? Gotta be a trick. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. It was because, um, I don't but, even know. Because he, he say, didn't he want to, like, oh, you give us this information and then you get a favor from the king of Atlantis? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically yeah. the gist of it. Is they're meeting with this. I, I, by the way, I actually, which is like, an amazing like deal. It. Yeah, but like, I, uh, I are they even vaguely oh, familiar with the power levels? Because it just seems like nobody ever is with Aquaman, and the, no, but it's like, but they should. Getting, he's incredibly strong. He, yeah. I mean, he's basically as strong as Wonder Woman. Um, even and and of course he has the added benefit of he can fuck around underwater as well. So, and command fish. But I guess yeah, they, like what if he just telepathically communicated with a bunch of fish to break in and destroy everything? But it's all good. It's, uh, they just don't think about that. What I was going to say is, I kind of like the Sunken Citadel, because it's like a very alien kind of place, with a bunch mm. of crazy... Yeah, there's some character here. Earth. Atlantis is just, like, it's mush. Boring. But Boring. this place kind of looks like, oh, okay, there's some stuff going on here. You know, this is What like I like about it is, we got CD, crazy you know. underwater critters that are basically aliens, but we only spend, like, three minutes here. <laughs> so... It's a shame. We moved past all of those character designs quickly. They, they basically meet with this big fat fish guy. Um, and the big right. fat fish guy is kind of like eccentric and everything. And Orm, He's... yeah, it's like you said, Metal. He tries to cut a deal with him. Did you did you already say what his name is? I actually can't remember what his name it's was. I just King Fish. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well the, <laughs> exactly. the naming department, their budget got <laughs> cut, I see. Yeah, King Fish is big King fat fish. guy. Yeah. He's sitting there and he's like, yeah, Orm says, you know, here's the deal. Um, you get a favor from the King of Atlantis in exchange for information on Black Manta, which, uh, you're right, Rags, that's a really good deal. Um, that is, but, yeah, uh, it's like, we're gonna, like, a favor from the King is like, hmm. So I but, basically uh, get, like, a freebie crime. But think of what it costs get... them. Think of the incredible cost. Yeah, uh, what, what is it? 
a little bit of information. A little bit of information that makes no difference to them whatsoever. Oh. Um, but, th but then, of course, because uh, Arthur is a violent man, he is opposed to making a deal and uh, opts for violence. Um, he just, <laughs> he, like, basically, the first thing he says is the deal is you tell me that or I won't torture you. Um, and then the king's like, wow, okay, geez. And then Arthur breaks out of his chains and then uh, tortures um, the fish king, uh, King Fish. He, he, he basically reverse waterboards him. Um, he, puts a, he puts like a big scuba helmet on him and begins draining it of water um, because Arthur is actually like a psychopath. Um, yeah. He always opts for violence whenever that option is available and seems to take great joy in flexing his unearned power over uh over innocent people <laughs> um something i, I noticed during that him. scene he uh, he should have definitely killed him uh with that because he keeps he keeps rotating the the wheel on it or the valve but mm -hmm. it's it, it still goes down the same amount even though it should go faster and faster that's just something i noticed that he probably should have run out of water uh yeah because it, but... it just gives it more and more but it just doesn't change it's just something i noticed it's just it's just crazy that this apparent hero is fine with yeah. like essentially waterboarding someone reverse after choosing violence. So, after instead choosing of, violence, yeah. yeah. Instead of diplomacy, like a king, you know, might try to do, like Orm. His deal was silly, but you know, at least Orm was trying diplomacy. You know, yeah, it's also kind of funny how the king fish guy says like, "Oh, normally the king always has like a blind eye for this one," and Arthur didn't even know about this at all. So <laughs> it's quite a yeah. blind eye. <laughs> it's sure. very blind Lots eye. Of blind eyes. <laughs> A more blind eye in a, in a more complete sense, really. Um, but that's okay. They get the information they need um, from the guy, and then he he does release him from the torture, uh, and then they just... By punching the fucking glass, the glass maybe out. cutting him in the eye or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that glass has to go somewhere, and it's not yep. going out. It's going nope. in. Because that's but where the okay. fist came from. <laughs> I hope he's okay. I hope that guy's okay. But uh, they, they escape, and also the octopus was there in stealth, and he just shoots him some uh, ink and then swims yeah. away thank goodness That's them gone we did it we saved i'm really glad uh, that they were able to i'm glad orm got out okay <laughs> this next scene is I'm really funny statement. it's uh it's just like manta talking to the ghost monster man in the mirror and then dr shit is just standing it was, outside yeah one of the first like, things what? people talked about on fnt when i was talking about this movie is how funny it is that he keeps leaving the fucking door open <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it's and there's the always door. the doctor who's like what you doing in there the <laughs> like, like, what's going what? on what is yeah you doing it's some so evil funny. and he's like no so funny he's just leaning there talking to the monster in the mirror and then it cuts over and he's just looking at it the funny uh, thing, the funny thing as, as well, is that implies the, the the monster man noticed that it's like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's like, oh, there's nobody at the door. Somebody is like a well, calling, Yo, is that your mom at the door? Correct me if I'm wrong. The monster man is like, hey, chill out a little bit with your plan. Like the monster in this, in the dynamic between them in the conversation is yeah. the chill, reasonable one. And Manta's like the insane one. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, yeah, you're not strong enough funny. yet. You need to calm down. Yeah, like, ancient zombie doing. demon is like, maybe you need to roll back on some of the attitude, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it is really funny, funny dynamic. Because he's a crazy, evil skeleton, bro, who's like, come on, man, chill. Yeah. Just chill. We're not all about calm this down. rage, okay? Uh, elsewhere, Arthur and Orm are heading to a place called Devil's Deep in the South Pacific, where it has been mentioned that there is a giant volcano leaking out a bunch of green gas. <gasps> they uh, show the nobody's noticed. They show the establishing shot. It's so much green smoke. Yeah, it's, 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 it's insane. Perpetual, perpetual green smoke for seemingly the last five months spewing out of a massive volcano yeah. that nobody has noticed. And we do get an explanation for it that doesn't account for eyeballs. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know that this. I know that the Pacific. I know the South Pacific in particular is uh, pretty. Um, not a lot of ships go through there, but it's not really a matter of ships. It's more just a satellite overhead, just seeing a picture, yeah. just snapping a picture of like, oh wow, there's a. And also considering that the climate change has gone so bad that massive swaths of like the Antarctic ice cap are melting, you think that the whole world would be like, yeah, united you know, to panicking. be like, what the hell's yeah. going on here? What what what's happening? Could it be the giant volcano <laughs> spewing green smoke? <laughs> Be Shut like, up, um, Jerry! You don't know what you're talking about. Oh <laughs> God, damn it! Uh, they they show up there and they trek through the forest and talk about cheeseburgers and pizza. Um, it, oh man, 
There's a yeah. When they do this, there's this part where he gives him a cockroach. Yes. And my first thought was like, oh, he's pranking him because he doesn't know any of the good foods from the upworld. And then he eats it. He goes like, oh, that's pretty good. And then Aqua goes like, yeah, right. And then they move on. I was like, what? what? Yeah, I feel like they what, murdered that? their own joke because the joke, the normal joke is for him to go, ew. And then Aquaman goes, ha, ha, ha. Tier two joke would be he goes, hmm. And then Aquaman goes, wait, what? And then, you know, like that you could leave it like that. And then, but like they've moved it all the way over to, yeah, like, like, ah, I like it. That Aquaman is like, yeah. Yeah, pretty good, isn't <laughs> it? Like, and then he opens a coconut or something that's black gooey. And then they move on. Well, it felt like we were in on the joke. And then I was like, wait, was Aquaman. Like, serious? Because now I can't actually yeah. tell. Is, is he like, yeah, cockroaches are pretty good. He's like, yeah, they do. Yeah. It also feels like they're recycling the joke in the first one where Mera ate, like, a flower. You yeah. Know? I'm just like, ah, see, they don't understand the cultures and customs and the foods on the land. Which it's, is funny because great. a human being who's never been in the ocean, if they went down there and saw seaweed, I don't think they would just be like, this is clearly your food. No, you know, of course you, not. You'd be like, well, you don't know. It could be anything. It could be water, flower, version. You know what I mean? Like, like the idea you see a flower and it'd be like, this must be the food. Well, I mean, especially with the flower. It's like a flower is fucking plants, you know? Like, yeah. You've got like, there's no, it's not like zero familiarity. Yeah. But, um, exactly. Setting that scene up, uh, I think Aquaman says, um, what will we'll be really good right now? What will be great right now? And, uh, uh, Orm says reinforcements. And then Aquaman's like, no, man, a burger and a pint of Guinness and some za. It's like, Zah. some some za. God, he sucks. <laughs> I start to get this feel, feeling of, like, I'm with Orm. We're dragging around this stupid caveman who, like, wants to do everything stupidly. But it's like, we're trying to save the world here, man. Yeah, also, I might be retarded, but with za, he means pizza, right? Yeah. Who says that? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I've ever heard that in my entire fucking life. Rags, right, can I blame the Americans for this one? We never <laughs> say pizza. Pizza. No, no not pizza. Za. <laughs> That's the thing. Za. Let za. Me the, I've never heard pizza part. called za. Some yeah. za. I've never, I've never heard this before. Yeah, me well, neither. This but has got to be maybe. some. I don't know. I, I blame. Well, who, we'll what say, country can I we blame? We can, France, Wan Belgium. A, well, so James Wan is Australian, but. I've never heard anybody say za in Australia in my entire life. Maybe he life, saw so. it in one tweet one time. I think it's uh, an American maybe, thing. I'm almost certain. Maybe I've never heard it in my life. Said. And I've been to, like, multiple regions of America. I've never heard it said. Okay. <laughs> maybe it's like Just, a young person thing. That Maybe that's what the young kids say. Some I, young I, Zoomery... <laughs> young people they're like za pizza is two syllables that's too complex for my brain we have to call it za so i googled it and that's like the first thing i find is from mel magazine and they have a pretty funny headline how we got stuck in the ongoing nightmare of calling pizza za which is from 2020 and then it continues if we fail to stop COVID from spreading but perhaps there's still time to contain za before truly gets out of control <laughs> <laughs> i agree it might with already be out of control that. Well, uh, it's in Aquaman 2, and the hero is saying it. Yeah, yeah and if the hero is Well, and the hero, well, Orm didn't say it, but Aquaman no. said it, so oh, shit. I... Apparently, in a comic panel for the Ninja Turtles, one of them called it Za. That's a, that's a, really? that's a whole rabbit hole, holy shit. The oh Za hole. The Za hole. <laughs> This is news to me. Jeez. Same. Yeah, um, I've, I've, never, I've never heard this before until the movie. No clue how it originated. It's maybe it's some terrible regional thing. This or article someone is quite amusing. Um, some people like me were personally horrified by this. Uh, quote, the first time I ever heard this abomination of a fucking word was while playing uh, my ex-boyfriend in words with friends. No one uses it and it's bullshit and I hate it. But yeah, You're allowed to use it in words with friends? Fuck off. There's no way. I'm just Maybe trying to find pizza, which country is to blame, you know, that's all I want to know. Definition of za. Is this? Online slang dictionary. I need to, I need to know more. This is crazy. <laughs> Who's You're doing this? You carry on. We'll research. It's important. Um, so they are, as they're moving through this forest, they see a giant butterfly, um, which then gets eaten by a giant plant, and then Arthur's like, oh, that's definitely not normal. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And then they get chased by a bunch of giant <laughs> Well, Orm bugs, asks if it's normal. A giant rat. 
Yeah, all moss if it's normal. Like, like, is that normal to have the normal. butterfly get eaten by the plant? And he confirms it's not normal. Then, uh, ha, 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 and I get chased by a bunch of massive bugs. Because, I mean, it's only been about five minutes since the last action scene. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's getting really a little confusing, boring. though, because, again, they're practically gods. And so it's like, why do you care if they're chasing you? You guys can just fuck yeah. them up. Just some weird I mean, grasshoppers or whatever the fuck they were. Given, was like, ah. given how strong we know that they are, you'd think that they would just be able to fight them off. I would um, expect Aquaman could do, like, a ground thing. pound, and they'd all go, bleh, you know? Yeah, probably. But then we um, wouldn't have this funny joke where the Ocean Master is not used to running. Yeah, he just that he's was not real used funny. to running. And then he starts running, and he's better than Arthur at running yeah. instantly. What but in the other scene, he's slower than him again, so I, yeah. I don't know. Isn't, doesn't he say <laughs> something like, uh, I bet the Oracalca uh, changed or mutated the flora and fauna in a really short amount of time? Like, to... To just yeah. account for the fact that we're in a wacky dinosaur world or whatever. Mm -hmm. just like, yeah, yeah like I think the it's the Orcalcum, okay. That we would, that, that's in an alternate version of this movie where it was Orm and uh, Aquaman for the majority of it, which is what they should have done, and dropped a lot of other plots. That would be the kind of thing that they say at HQ before they go to stop him at the islands. Like, now be careful, it's going to be dangerous. The Orcalcum has mutated the flora and fauna to be, you know, to be spooky. So Big. watch out, and they're like, okay, how bad can it be? And then it cuts to them on the island watching something horrific happening or something. I don't mm. know. But that seems they, like a normal joke. Seems yeah. like a pretty basic standard, like, uh, you know, like, oh, okay. Like, you probably even know the joke before it happens, but it's kind of okay because the joke's not trying to be super subversive. It's pretty standard, like, oh, yeah, it is really bad. You know, we're... I just, I, now I'm just thinking as you talk about it, it's like, yeah, this is what's causing it. It's like, why is that happening? It's because he's getting the flame fuel and just burning it. He's just burning it to deliberately to, pollute the planet. Well, 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 again, you know, uh, to, to defend the film, <laughs> it's the zombie king that wants to do that to melt his, his uh, prison. I forgot the prison. zombie no, king. I, I guess what I'm saying is it's just like, it's, it's funny because it's it just in terms of like trying to make it applicable to real world Pollution happens because that's like yeah. the process of trying to run the world. You know, cars use petrol. Actually, no, it's really clever petrol. because he wants the power to kill Aquaman. He's promised that from releasing pollution. So, really, it's a man searching for more yeah, power in the, the world biggest, and he's destroying the world by doing it. That's very applicable. Pollute the earth and I'll let you kill the Aquaman. The stretch I can think of is the idea that it's like, see, it's the prison, kind of like how humans are polluting to escape the prison of being living on earth or something and they want to go they want to go <laughs> elsewhere but like you know i don't think it, it's just it's just not analogous when it's you're just like burning you're you're polluting for the sake of polluting that is your your goal is to pollute <laughs> it's not analogous with polluting as the bike yeah, wouldn't it be of, potentially of more interesting if the pollution was as part of an arms race for both you know atlantis and earth because mm. a war is you know beginning yeah, to, exactly. something like that because it's just like oh see our, our interest in trying to dominate the other civilization has actually destroyed the world we both live on well it's just presume if the point of the film which i presume it would have to be is like we need to think about and deal with climate change how does this help how does this help that of like ah yes the film where the guy deliberately polluted to free an evil fucking skeleton man from his prison so they could kill aquaman <laughs> Because if you're if you're trying to make a movie that's about climate change and pollution of the earth, you have to you probably you probably shouldn't be about like underground zombie lords trying to resurrect all the Draugr or whatever. It hmm. needs to be like, what are you willing to do to make the earth clean? Like your standard of what living you and your technology and your power. Because exactly. um, that's that's. In terms of dealing with it as a problem, that's kind of like that's the conversation about yeah, it. it's like, about like what, selfishness what and what we have what the line is sacrifice in order to solve the problem. Uh, what kind of things do we need? You know, like because that that's kind of like the nature of it, right? If you want to get the money for like research and development into cleaner, you know, modes of energy, that's a cost and that's a trade off somewhere. Or like, is there things that you need to trade off in your personal life? Um, it's it's like those are the kind of like government policy, those sorts of things are the conversations that you. But it have should mostly on. be about India and China, but they ain't gonna do that. So, oh well, um, zombie king uh, well, is uh, uh, zombie king. It, <laughs> basically, the same. It, how is it even like? What am I supposed to learn when it's like ah? Uh, the moral of the story is don't go insane and talk to an evil skeleton man in the mirror who convinces you to deliberately oh. pollute. 
it's well, clearly it's an allegory, as was said. It represents big, bad, evil corporation men, zombie kings. Same diff. Polluting the world. <laughs> That's what we call <laughs> subtext, okay? You're supposed to be able to detect it. It's very uh, um, yeah. metaphorical, symbology, uh, other words that relate to stuff. There, I did it. I analyzed sure. it. Sure. I agree. Um, during this chase scene, they, they run up to like a big crevasse, at, like a massive cliff, and, and Orm's like, all right, jump down there. We could probably survive that. I'm just like, oh, can you? Can all right. you? Um, and then, uh, you see decides, something I can't see, maybe. I don't know. sees a statue that's got an engraving on the side saying, a king, like a true king builds bridges. Um, Why is that here? Because. So I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know if there's anything. I guess because because I figured that their base was there. I didn't know if it was like actually like an ancient base that had existed from the before times, or if it was a base yeah. that they had built into the volcano to deliberately put the stuff in the volcano to pollute. But yeah. the statue is there, and exactly. Arthur it knocks here. it over. He bumps into it and it collapses, which is like, oh wow! So you're like super duper strong. Yeah, you probably could fight the uh, the bugs. Instead of running away, but um, only that this be... thing shouldn't function as a bridge because the hatch was just pop off the way it fell, but it yeah, just exactly. stops and it's perfectly fine until they get over there. Well, they get over and then they push it off, so they're strong enough oh, to right. push it off, and then uh, all of the bugs they fall down. It's like, man, you guys really probably could have just fought them and won. No, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. You're okay. It's they good. They needed to go um, this way anyway. I mean. It is really lucky that, like, the statue fell in the direction that it did. If it fell, like, the other way, or if it even fell, like, in an angle, then they wouldn't have been able to get across. Or if it started breaking at a higher point, then they would have yeah. just been screwed. But it's fun. On so, the note as well of, like, the statue related to building bridges as a leader, like, if you want me to buy that as a kind of cool element to think about Aquaman, like, making use of it in that way, but then it, like, crumbles apart and falls down the, the chasm eventually because they you know what i mean i'm like okay now you don't want me to think about it right because <laughs> like, yeah, what am i supposed to draw from it otherwise here. mixed messages or is it perfect it represents aquaman one where it's like see he's united everybody and then it all falls apart because he's a terrible leader <laughs> I mean, yeah, good job i guess mm -hmm. to us, you know? um but i mean you know <laughs> we got another scene um, we got another scene with Black Manta that's really funny, um, because, like, it, the door's open to his quarters. Oh, oh, no, Dr. Shin just goes in, the door's unlocked. Yep, as um, per usual. Not there, uh, and the room's empty, so he grabs the trident, and then it shows the evil spirit, the skeleton man's plan to raise an army of zombies, um, and then Manta's behind him, <laughs> just what you looking doing, nice buddy? Evil. Yeah, what you... Yeah. Also, this just as you're recounting all these things, like this movie really does fly by when you just sort yeah. of describe it broadly because it does. God, it's it's really tough to sort of explain that this film is it it it's not the worst slog, but it's still a slog because there tries to be so much plot, go here, do this, shitty characters, bad dialogue, everyone's a moron. You, it's a long movie and it feels like it's a long movie. Um but it's just, boy, like, you guys just don't know. You guys don't know. This is, uh, oh, it's not fun at all. It's still better than Rebel Moon, but, geez, not fun at all. <laughs> so, like, Black Manta, like, pins him to the wall and, and basically says, he, j he just says, I'm going to kill Aquaman. And <laughs> He's such a goober. I'm going to kill Aquaman and destroy everything he holds dear. I'm going to murder his family and burn his kingdom to yeah. ash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's got some yeah. issues. He's he's holding on to some. Yeah, he's he's holding on to some emotions <laughs> there. Um, it's it's just like he's such a goober. Um, it's definitely. Yeah, that's, uh, I was just gonna say that like it's just you get reaffirmed constantly how useless he's gonna be as as anyone to be interested in. And uh, he, he, I mean, you know, I was about to say spoilers, but he gets booed from the film <laughs> with about as much interest as is generated throughout. So I feel like the film agrees with what the audience would probably think. Nobody likes Black Manta. He was only here to facilitate other things. Hmm. Uh, pretty much, which, um, I don't know, just seems like a... It's a waste. Stupid. Yeah, like, but, why bring him back? I uh, mean, they the... fucking play this... Like, they won't stop reminding you. It's like, I hate you because my daddy died. It's like, you do remember why your dad died, right? <laughs> like, dad was a terrible person. He was an asshole. <laughs> 
<laughs> what was <laughs> his daddy? You guys are like pirates or something. Yeah, he's just he's just an all around bad person who gets worse and then is possessed by an even bad thing. And you're just like, what's okay? There's no hope for you, bud. Even fucking Palpatine and Sauron are like, man, <laughs> you could work on your personality. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But that's enough of that. Um, that that this is the part we were talking about before. They have essentially a conversation about like the the nature of how. You know, that they're, they're fighting over who should be king and how Arthur doesn't really want to be king and how Orm had always sort of been led to believe that Arthur was going to come back and take the throne from him. But again, we only get about 20 seconds of that before they just decide, all right, time for some jokes and let's get moving on because uh, we're done with character development yeah. at this point. He also calls Orm Loki, which I found really weird because Orm is nothing like Loki at all. They're totally different people. Well, oh, and you yeah, can tell I, that's I one of the influences that. for doing this. So people <laughs> like Thor and Loki. We're kind of like Thor and Loki. It's like, no. Except, no. So Orm has a completely different personality and powers. So yeah, and, and like, like I wouldn't say Thor's a dude bro. I mean, he's getting closer as the films go uh, on. They seem to yeah. desperately want him to be a loser dude bro, but... yeah. Sorry, I, I, as well, I was just remembering. Did you did you recount the quote of uh, recount the quote of, of him saying, "What's the, the Shin Doctor Shit?" He says, uh, "You can't t trust the Trident." That line just <laughs> I just saw it laughing. I thought it was so funny. You can't trust the Trident. Do not it sounds like a Teenage trident. Mutant Ninja Turtles slogan or whatever. You can't trust the Trident. <laughs> Cowabunga, dude! Saying it to his bosses though. It would make any fucking difference whether or not he was possessed by a super evil Scalabad. Like, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. You're telling the possessed person that they can't trust the possessing entity. You're like, all right. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yes. Also, uh, but, uh, back over to, to Aquaman. The, um, doesn't that seem no. partially, or at least the part, one of the jokes he makes, jokes, comments he makes is, I'm going to pull uh, his tongue out of his butt. That's like, that's like one of the things. He's, and it's just like, fucking hell. The jokes suck. This is what I... It was an annoying thing about the first film, and it's something that I feel like is becoming more apparent with this one. Like, it seems like people are aware of it now. But it was always the case. The films were never fun in the way that they were trying to be. The jokes that they wanted to tell sucks. It was funny, un like, ironically. You're not meant to laugh when they play the Ocean Master theme, but it's really funny. You don't meant to, You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah it's... And then the same carries through here. The jokes that they try to make aren't funny, but the, but the things, things that, that they try to make serious, yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. so incompetent that they make you giggle, because it's like, oh, look at you trying. This is pathetic. We're we're about to get to the funniest part of the film, um, because <laughs> they get to the they get to Mantis Hidden Base and they make a lot of noise as they effortlessly sneak through, mm -hmm. and then they get to the control room and they kill everybody inside without anybody raising the alarm, um, and then we get you know them basically saying like, well, oh my god, this place is you. Worth knowing, um, it, it, I think they play at the idea that they don't want to kill anyone, sort of, because Orm goes to shoot someone and then Aquaman's like, whoa, 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 just knock him out. Yeah. Right, right, and, and it's just kind of like you guys are gods, and you you well, slam no, them into the head like to the point where they slam down into the ground. So I feel like they that. are dead. I don't think so because Aquaman, Aquaman really wants to kill the Doctor in a few yeah. moments, and Orm is yeah. like, "No, don't That's do right. it." That's right. He he really he doesn't want to really kill. He wants to knock him out. Uh, well, no, but in the in the fight scene, like I I don't. It doesn't make sense to me the idea that he. Why would he give a shit? They're bad guys. Who well, so I, uh, what I was going to bring up secondarily was I thought in the first film Aquaman was one of the people that just he literally let people die. That's part of the core yes. motive from Black Manta. I didn't know. I thought his system was like, hey, if they chose to be bad guys, then they get the bad guy treatment. I didn't realize he was like, whoa, 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 we don't kill or something. Like that's the. I was like, what are we doing? And it's like, is it just residue from like? You're making a superhero movie, so you try to avoid killing people or something. Even though, even though there's plenty of wanton destruction, yeah. and death anyway. Well, I mean, yeah, it reminds me of Man of Steel, right? Human, like, you know, it's the same mistake a lot of these filmmakers make. They're like, oh, what? When we have the explicit, like, one on one, and the person goes, oh no, you've beaten me. Now what will you do? It's like, oh. However, they forget, like, during all of the other fight scenes, they're practically annihilating thousands of civilians exactly. without caring. It's Last of Us Two. Oh, yeah. That too, yeah. Yep. Um. The, the, this is the part where they try to give their pathetic excuse for why nobody noticed the pollution, which is that the base was heat shielded to prevent thermal satellites from noticing the burning <laughs> of the flame fuel. Which, but if yeah. it's still shielded, 
It's also it's also Orm with the fucking uh, throwaway lines. He just keeps doing that. They keep using him to be like, it must have been this that allows this to happen to make this make exactly. sense. It's like, okay. And it just fundamentally doesn't address that your eyeballs should see the green gas spewing from the volcano. Yep. Yeah. With oh. a satellite as well. A heat shield's not going to prevent a satellite from seeing just green gas, but... It, by the way, this next part is so important for the plot. It's kind of hilarious. Um, Doctor Shin, like he just is there. He he's the first person yep. to discover them in the in there, and mm -hmm. he, he he pretends like I'm a capture you, but then closes the door and is like I'm I'm I want to get the fuck out of here. I don't like this. Yeah, um, this guy's like, crazy. Like, Are we supposed to think that these guns can damage them? Sorry, did you say that? Uh, um, I think we are meant to conclude. Yeah, that because the... they're probably like ancient Atlantean adjacent guns. Some of them are like, so they do shoot like sound waves as well, which can work on them. I think so. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, they are meant to be like the ancient technology, I think, which mm -hmm. uh, appears to basically we just have to accept that it's hyper effective. Um, but he, you know, he's he's not going to use it. He's like, I'm sorry, like I just wanted to explore Atlantis, uh, not help man to destroy the world, which is pretty funny because it's like, motherfucker, you fired the I, cannons. Yes, like, you kill. You are personally responsible yeah. for many deaths. Hmm. You are yes. a terrible person who has a lot of blood on your hands. But the film doesn't seem to realize. No. Well, the thing is, is a lot Arthur's of crab like, blood. You, Arthur's like, do you expect us to believe that you've had like a change of heart? He said, like, yeah, no, I made some mistakes. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, have you made some mistakes? Yeah. I guess so. Um, but then, yeah, this is a part where, again, Arthur demonstrates his uh, psych uh, psychopathic tendencies because even though Dr. Shin is unarmed and complying with, with him, Arthur's like, well, let's let's assault him. Knock him um, out. And he's like, no. Orm, Orm says no. Yeah, which uh, is the... That's what I was going to be like. It feels like a complete flip of Ilya where Orm was yep. going to shoot someone and Aquaman was like, no, 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 we'll just hit him. Meanwhile... Now yeah, we're doing this. This unarmed scientist, I really want to hurt him. Not um, to mention, he's, he's like he's like cooperating. Like what? Yeah, mm -hmm. he is actively cooperating, but he's just like, well, I want to, I want to assault him. The like fucking meathead doesn't know what's going on. I can squeeze Orm. a little bit more violence out of this mission. Yes, Orm, the true hero, is like, no, that would be wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and, then, and then they want to get, they're like, all right, Dr. Shin, you need to explain what's going on. And then, sudden explosion makes its dramatic return. Yep. Oh, Dr. no, Shin, sudden explosion, Dr. how could you? Dr. 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 Now. I was cackling. <laughs> that shit was so they, funny. They really did bring it back. The thing that it. it's sudden explosion, my funny. old friend, my old here's what's friend. Not funny. What's not funny is Arthur saying, I hate when that happens. Um, that wasn't funny. Dump, 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 it's not funny when you acknowledge it. You just need to have the sudden explosion and then don't make a joke about it. The joke has already been made. It could, it could be happened. that they are actually that unaware and that the joke is simply referencing that one time that just happened right now. Like, oh. you know when something crazy and ridiculous happens in life and you go, I hate when that happens. Obviously it's funny because it's like, that mm. never happens. I don't know, but... but you know, obviously we're I thinking think like you must be referencing the fact that this happened like ten times in total now. I think, because uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a commonly known thing that happened in the first film of, man, there was just like a lot of sudden explosion. Mm -hmm. You, but, uh, the way to make a joke of that is that someone says, all right, so here's the evil person's plan. And then both like Aquaman, he like looks around like he's like, he looks up into the ceiling, <laughs> like he steadies himself for something happening. And then, just, then he's like, oh, okay, carry on. <laughs> you know, that mm -hmm. would be, it doesn't happen. <laughs> then, that's, explosion, you know, that's God that's down, happened um also dr shin despite being closest to the explosion is not dead uh he got knocked out yeah um, he's fine mm -hmm. he's okay which uh which means wow if he's knocked out it means the bad guys don't know that he was making a deal with them and it means that he'll be able to continue to be part of the bad guy team yeah uh, effects so that means that he'll be in a position to uniquely subvert the bad guys operations how convenient yeah, this because so luckily he gets the baby on his board in a, uh, later on. Oh, sorry, spoilers. Wow. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not there yet. We got. We got an exciting action scene. We're not. Uh, oh my god, you're right. There's a baby in peril uh, in this movie. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a blood it. ritual in a baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you're right. They forget, about, they forget about Arthur's family for most of the film until like. Oh, so did the film. So it's fine. 
that's what I mean. It's just like the whole mm-hmm. film forgets about it, but we got a big action scene where it's kind of funny because this whole action scene feels like it's it's the end of the movie. I was like, actually, no. <laughs> yeah, we're at the second act low point, kind of. We're nearly at the second act low point sort of action scene. This is our big second act fight, I guess we would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not like we've already had four of those, but still. <laughs> um, I, I don't even know what is there's not much to be said about the fight i just didn't find it very like interesting at all it was no. um, it had weird stupid physics weird sort of interactions between like them and the big octopus machine that they were fighting where like it just temporarily forgets how many legs it has that it can use against them um it's it's just like th- th- there's like a part where again it's it's really crazy physics they like do the thing of you know, it's the hot thing, right, of wrapping the stuff around the legs so that it falls over. They throw, like, a chain, and it has this weird physics where, like, it redirects mid-air so mm. that it can wrap around the legs and stop it from, uh, from, from you know, killing them. Um, it's just, it's just stupid. It's not, we'll it's just check it out, it was like, wouldn't it be more fun if he tried really hard and it just really didn't work? Like, it just didn't even come close, he's like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Like he has to try something yeah. else because it's like it, it, the the physics on her are quite funny. It's just like, oh, well, that's that just worked out in the best possible way, huh? <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Just a little wrap around, and, no um, problemo. Because Orm is the real character in this film, he gets another beat where, uh, like the lady inside who was piloting it is there, and Orm's, you know, he's got a gun and he can he can kill her, but uh, he he doesn't want to. He stops. He doesn't want to do it. Um, but then he gets struck by another sudden explosion. So yeah. we're back to so, I mean, though, normal action again. Aquaman one or um, he would have killed her. Aquaman two or yeah. he'd be like, so he's come a long way. It's like I don't have anything to explain why, but they they're <laughs> allowing him to be more dimensional. Yeah, which is something with something. him. It's something. It's better somewhere. than all the nothing in this movie. Yeah, it makes me but, like uh, him. Yeah, but unfortunately, Black Manta's coming along to ruin all of that. Let's do that. <laughs> Instead of just and, randomly turning people into shitty assholes, what if we just randomly turn them into to do the reverse? Bit. Just yeah. like maybe the next film they're just kind of nice and likable and interesting. Just <laughs> even you if know, it's inexplicable, I'll just like I'll fucking take it. Baby steps. That should probably be flagged for future conversations as an example of one of the very few of writing that's not really supported, but it's doing a nice thing and it works mm. way better than non-supported ni- nasty things. Well, it's just if your if your choice is to continue with garbage or to contradict yourself in a positive direction, you know, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like I'd prefer to see that. Um they decide that to be doesn't, with Manta. That doesn't have another payoff to it, right? She doesn't make a decision later based on the fact that he spared no, her. No, she 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 just eventually dies yeah. later. Um <laughs> by by Arthur. He uh, kills her and a bunch of other people. Um but uh no, that's that's just that beat of him being more merciful. Um which, uh, yeah, I guess, which is, I mean, it's kind of interesting. I mean, he was already showing mercy to uh, Dr. Shin anyway, so. But, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah, but Black Mance is here to ruin that, because they need to have a fight. Um, it's true. And, and, like, Arthur explains to Orm that Manta is a lot stronger, and Orm just kind of, like, ignores him, and then gets flattened straight away. Just gets punched and knocked out of the fight immediately. Well, it's a comedic beat. We're not being serious again, so. Yeah, like, he slides across the ground with his arms, like. And isn't he, like, <laughs> sort of thing? Yeah. Which, by the way, sounds. makes me think they're kind of ripping Loki and Hulk a little bit mm, for that joke. A little bit. It's a bit, it's fine. It's a bit uh, yeah. But then they have their fight. Um, they, you know, they, they get into a fight, and then, um, like, as the fight happens, the, the, uh, the trident gets thrown. Orm grabs it and uh, gets blasted with a bunch of uh, soon to be exposition. <laughs> like, it just shows a bunch of new imagery that we haven't seen before, and it's like, ah. We got an exposition dump incoming. But think about how important this is. If he didn't grab that, he wouldn't have gotten all of this, and we wouldn't be getting a shit ton of essential information that we're about to discover, so, like, in five minutes. So that means that the demon possessing the trident, he can't decide to just, like, pass and not give the visions of um, his plan? Honestly, like I think if you watch it all, first time grab is a freebie any more than that, and he possesses you. <laughs> Seems like it, yeah. I, thi- oh, okay. I think that is that follows with everything we see in the movie. It's it's retarded, of course. I can't explain why. Right. Well, yeah. mm-hmm. He grabs it once and it doesn't do anything, and yeah, Orm grabs it twice. Manta grabs it more than twice. Maybe, maybe. I don't um, know if they were actually going for it, but I will say, um, a little bit of a defense in the in the nature of that event happening. It's reasonable in the middle of a fight that you'd pick up your enemy's weapon. Like yeah, a, absolutely. Oh, I don't I blame him at all. It, yeah, I don't blame him. I think him. it's yeah. reasonable that it happens. It's more so a matter of just imagine Manson decided not to throw it. 
like imagine if you just made a slightly different choice yeah. um and then he and then a, a whole bunch of information that they need that they need and that they couldn't have found without it is gone mm -hmm. i think that's the thing that's worth noting um but that yeah like uh he gets blasted with uh mance's laser and then mance is about to execute a warm but uh drago shows up with a bunch of atlantean ships that just bombard the volcano while those guys are inside um, and I guess he just doesn't care if uh, the debris kills them, which it nearly does. Or also, if it detonates all of the Orichalcum. Yeah, which imagine if it did that and destroyed that everything. Just yeah, absolutely fucking idiotic. I don't know why they mm -hmm. would have concluded that was a good idea. Uh, and also the timing, man. If they showed up five minutes earlier or later, whole movie changes. Isn't that crazy? Mm. Like, if they oh, showed yeah, up five minutes later, luckily, Orm oh, dead. They didn't. How very good. Uh, which I will then add, yeah, Orm would have been dead. They would have lost all of that information. Obviously, it changes everything, because now Orm's dead, and he can't have his little arc and everything. Uh, and five minutes earlier, this before, before the action scene, so who knows how it would have changed things. Um, but, I mean, we're, ne we're nearly done with this action scene. Manta, he flees. They go into the water, and he flees, and uh, blasts Arthur with the cannon, and then Arthur gets pinned under some rocks, but Mera comes along and, like, grabs all of these massive rocks and moves them with seeming ease because her powers are way greater than, uh, Aquaman. Like, she's just more powerful than him. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> like, she's so overpowered. It seems kind of crazy that, like, the power would be so strong that you can just effortlessly move a bunch of massive rocks that are powerful enough to pin down a guy who just single-handedly pushed a massive giant statue like off of a cliff with relative ease he's but, a little bit know, tired levels are hard. yeah i guess so mm -hmm. um and and yeah this is the first time that we find out that the crab king is miraculously alive the whole group like reconvenes on a nearby island and you got drago there and the crab king who's like i survived but you know he cut off my claw didn't we see him in uh, the montage part Oh, we saw him in the montage at the beginning during, like, the politics thing, but this is his first, like, proper scene of having a conversation. But that confirmed he was alive and well. Yes, even though he wasn't. He, uh, <laughs> he was, like, at the epicenter of the destruction. Um, but I like how he's just over Arthur, killing many of his guys, too. Like, really, Arthur probably caused more destruction to the Crab Kingdom than, uh, Anything than Orm did. in all history of modern COVID. Did. Yeah. Um, but then... We got a massive exposition dump incoming. It's really big. I'll just run through it before we talk about it. So it's all the information he got from the Trident, which gives him a bunch of information that um, the Lost Kingdom, Necris, was uh, run Necris. by Atlan. Yeah, that was I run by... I uh, fucking hate that name. So I'm going to run through the whole thing, and then we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um... Orm explains that, yeah, Necris is the Lost Kingdom, and it was run by King Atland, who was, like, the founder of Atlantis's brother, Cordax. Um, they used the, the, the Oracolcum flame fuel to build their empire, but it was, you know, fucking up the planet, so Atlan told him to stop. And Cordax, he resented Atlan and thought that he was um, just trying to, like, stop him from running his kingdom and being a super cool guy. So he used dark magic to create the Black Trident, and then turned himself and his own people into zombies and monsters to wage war with Atlantis, <laughs> and lost, and then got sealed and in an ice prison <laughs> with um, blood magic by uh, Atlan that sealed him there yeah. uh, in, in ice forever. Um, I don't know why he didn't just kill him, since he won the war. But, well, you uh, can't just him. kill him, and when you imprison him, you have to make sure that the magic has a way to <laughs> open it back up. Just in case yes, you need to get right. it again, you know? Just in case. I just find it funny that it's like, Oh, you told me to stop polluting? I'm gonna turn myself into a monster man and turn all my people into monster people. Yeah. It's actually crazy <laughs> that someone could have read that out and someone else said, Yep. Yeah, yep, here's that 200 movie. million that dollars. Out. Yeah. There's a uh, lot of money. This is so I mean, funny I like, because of, I, I guess yep. the implication is the 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 pollution, the the global warming was already so bad that it got rid of some of the ice blood magic and awakened the tentacle thing five months ago. That's I think that's what what we're meant to conclude is essentially that normal normal climate change that's not the crazy <laughs> sci-fi bullshit in this movie yeah. melted it sufficiently to where they could discover the lost kingdom but that he needed to accelerate it himself personally 
to melt enough of the ice yeah, to where he could... It makes complete waiting. sense. Uh, tier 1, human, <laughs> no. global warming, releases the trident and a couple of zombie squid whatevers. So, yeah, that makes sense. Why was the trident just laying around? No, that makes sense. And then the Oracalcum... Why didn't, why didn't uh, Atlan take it? That makes Even sense that he wouldn't Hobbit, take it. Even in The Hobbit, they buried the Witch King with the Morgul Blade. Like even they didn't fuck that up. <laughs> well, and also if if the if the evil Necris King guy Cordax, if he was how how long has he already been waiting? How much uh, long would he have to wait? Didn't what? he say like thousands and thousands of years? Yeah, yeah. Long, uh, out, I guess he got thousands of years ago. He get impatient, yeah. I suppose. You know, and just waiting quietly. So then the Orichalcum boost unlocks even Flame more sword, Zambies, yeah. and the only one that's held by sure. blood magic is specifically Cordax, though his spirit lives on in the in the Trident. Even though what we saw in the visuals, though, was that all of these zombies also yeah. got sealed. No, the, no, uh, because... Magic. Because, <laughs> no. <laughs> that sounds complicated. Yeah, the I don't logistics know. of that seems unreasonable. And that's also, so like, true, because really, we they were just killed. Wait, that means that they didn't kill the zombies? How did they lose? No, they, they were frozen. That keeps you alive. Oh, yeah. they were. No, no, no. I mean, like well in the, the war. Yeah, like the, the war Atlantis that they won. Fought. I guess they. they, won, they uh, well, it, there is a weird shot where he he the does zombies? the spell, and then there's a whole bunch of zombies yeah. running away, and it's like, uh -huh. were they not dealt they with? Frozen. No. The answer is no. Seemingly. The answer is no. Not. Oh, here's two hundred yeah. million dollars yeah. for your zombie. What a shitty story. fucking. <laughs> what a shitty fucking spell. That just can just this, be undone uh, by time. <laughs> this is all just garbage. It's yeah, all just garbage. fucking awful. Um, and and so we get back to the film looking like it was chopped to shit because <laughs> they have all this conversation up on land, and then we just cut to them like in a ship for about twenty seconds to to continue their conversation. Yeah. Um, to where it really seems like yeah, that one was massively reshot. Um, but basically, they they they're they're, uh, they're up on land, and now they're just undersea for like twenty oh, seconds yeah. to talk about it. Um, again, this is a scene where Amber Heard is in it, so I presume that that has something to do with it. Um, yeah, basically, point. what they explain is that, um, the key to Kordax's prison is the royal bloodline. Um, it's not really magic, it's like DNA, so it's the royal bloodline could free him. Uh, and then everybody, uh, like, Orm says, oh, well, we're the end of the bloodline, you know, like, me, Arthur, and, uh, and Nicole Kidman. Uh, and then they realize, well, no, actually, uh, Arthur Jr., remember him? <laughs> um, yeah, he's in danger. Um, and so then Whoops. we cut to, uh, we're, we're at Boba Fett's house, and um, there was a thunderstorm happening, which was very, uh, very, it sets the mood really well. <laughs> um, and so... I was going to yeah, say, by the way, the, on the note of those other two scenes, uh, the, it's huge for Orm to be speaking to a lot of these characters, and it's really glossed over so quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, again, it's his mother... Um, Nicole Kidman, it's, it, it was going to be his wife, you know, with Mera, and of course it's his brother, and it's, uh, it's uh, Drago, man. who he manipulated into, uh, waging yeah. his war with him, and, uh, yeah, Crabman, who he's cut off his arm, but we, we just, the Crabman and, and Drago kind of confront him, but everybody else is just, they're just sort of, well, and, and even there, like, I, we, we made memes about it a little bit earlier, but, uh, you know, the... He, the, with the king, he's he's kind of like, like I don't like you, and then I like you. That's about what they do. Yep. They no, don't give it to Crab King though, because he's not a human person. So yeah, all he says is but, ha ha he doesn't like you. Yeah. Like okay, I mean, I think, you, you could have uh, done a hell of a lot Davies, with this. Uh, plays the crab man, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of fun. I wish we got a film about the Crab King mm -hmm. <laughs> and his adventures, but no. Um. But yeah, we, we're uh, we're at Boba Fett's house. He's watching TV with uh, Arthur Junior, and then the power goes off, and he's like, "All right, well, that's kind of weird. Let me let me sort that out." And the fucking Black Mads is just standing there <laughs> in the darkness, and he stabs him, and he and he says, "And I I get the impression that this was ADR, um, because they were probably going to kill off um, they're probably going to yeah. kill off uh Boba Fett, but they changed their mind." He says. I'm I'm going to let you live so that they can watch you die. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> this is the weirdest fucking scene in the whole film for me. Uh, yeah. If I can, I'll even summarize and, and, and think for it. It's, uh, you see that, and so the viewer knows now, oh shit, his, his dad is in so much trouble. And anyone who's watched films is like, this is probably his death scene because it'll give Arthur a big old boost of motivation. And the Especially son is missing. considering you know? the meta knowledge on top. It's like, oh, this is the last yeah, one. So this, this is it. Might as so, well. And they arrive, the house is like exploded, there's fire everywhere, he's he's stumbling out of it, covered in blood, and uh, 
you know, Mira's screaming because of the, the kid's been taken. And he's like, I'm sorry, uh, you know, Manta took the, the junior. And then and then they have a slow-mo shot of Aquaman going, no! no! <laughs> Cut. Let's have a scene with Dr. Shin again, snooping around on the ship. And it's like, okay. Yeah. What a and strange, then, this movie is so weird. This and then is we a cut back. film experience. We cut back to, your dad's going to be fine. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? Exactly. I thought he was going to die. The whole plan was that he was going to die in front of, like, of old age? Well, like, eventually I'm, I'm, he's going to die of old age surrounded by loved ones? Is that what the bad guy meant? That didn't seem that bad. It's not much of a curse. It's, it's just when and it, when you when you put everything together, when you put together that that line really, uh, now it's funny, it's like, well, all of the scenes with him with his helmet on his ADR, but this one felt like it wasn't something he said. It feels like the scene that originally played out with him getting stabbed with silence, because of course... Having mm -hmm. him just awkwardly say, "I'm not going to kill you while I've got my <laughs> trident in your in your heart." There, I'm going to let you live so that you can die. I it's thought like, he was like poisoned, or I, like I, he was cursed. Yeah, or something. I thought I thought he, he gave him a special slowly... stab. Yeah, like a special <laughs> stab to the heart that like put poison in his veins or a I magic just... curse. And they'd be I like, oh see. no, we have to save our dad with the magic. But the only way to break the magic seal is to defeat It's the, the most evil normal witch. Yeah. scene as a second act low point. The, the, the older man who gave him advice, obviously in this case being his dad, is going to die. And it's gonna be like, you go on, so you know, you worry about the next generation. You make sure he doesn't get my, mm -hmm. my grad, that sort of stuff. Like I said, and the slow mo shot, it's so very like, okay, yeah. all right, we're mm -hmm. doing emotions. That's, that's especially, especially when you've got Uncle Man screaming as he holds his dying dad. No. It's the only time I think he does normal. acting in the whole movie. Uh, yeah, because yeah, he, he looks pretty distraught. Um, he can act. And, He's, he and then, he uh, is actually an actor. Sometimes. And then, like you said, Hard cut to just a completely different scene of just Dr. Shin seeing that Manta has abducted this baby. And then, <laughs> Once and again, then the room is child. open. I he think sees he it. Slightly the, unhinged. The, the door is open and he looks over <laughs> with fucking green eyes. His eyes are glowing green and then the door slams shut. <laughs> it's, so, the child. it's so fucking funny. Just close <laughs> yeah. the door to begin with, you stupid fuck. <laughs> like, All I needed him to say, though, was like, is that a fucking baby? <laughs> Listen, I've been meaning to talk to you about our gradual descent into evil and yeah. the sacrificing a baby about, thing. Uh, Come on now. I'm thinking about what you've been saying about destroying the Earth. Oh, is that a baby? <laughs> oh, okay, that's just too far. That's right? too far. Okay, and then, I quit. And then cut back to just like, oh, he'll be okay. He's got a little got him uh, in a, tech he's on him, yeah. Atlantean machine. And then it's so funny just, because a lot of times we, we complain about how they have all this uh, medic technology that's super advanced and they never use it. And now in this part where you actually want to kill someone off where it makes a lot of sense, it's like, no, now we're using it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just easy drama of, yeah. wow, Matt is so evil and like a villain that's actually affecting your life that he's killed your dad and abducted your son. But but to have it be oh well he didn't kill him like he he's okay he'll be it's, fine and it's not it hurt, like and it sucks, but he's okay he'll it's be not fine. utilized for anything it's just like a payoff that was sitting right there and I was gone because it's like yeah. doesn't it make sense to have him kill your dad because you let his but, dad die or something know. you know I could imagine again it was something that they changed their mind on like this whole scene's really weird because they're or up he there. uses the kid to lure Aquaman to a place to like ambush him. And, and he's like, it, Aquaman's like, stay away from my kid. I won't let you kill him. He's like, kill him. No, I don't want to kill the kid. I want him to watch his so father. I'm like, I had to watch my father die. My yeah, I guess so. And then they have the fight. And then it's it like there's, it's, it's, <laughs> what happens? Well, I mean, the, the fact that he said I wanted to watch <laughs> him die is relevant to that. But then he just doesn't die. I just don't, like, I'd love to know how that happened because. As much as we're talking about reshoots, cutting, and all the mess this film went through, I don't see the motive to keep Tamura Morrison's Aquaman's dad alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just seems it's like because that would be time. sad, and it's we don't do sad. Sad. okay. <laughs> you don't want to go to an Aquaman movie and feel something. It's gonna be okay, guys. Sad. You want to feel like happy. Maybe that you is the best example feel. of that to have him go. No, you you sit it's with okay, that emotion for the length of Doctor Shin's scene, and then they come back like, "Oh, we're fine. Yeah. We didn't want to didn't that put you in that one. mode for too long." It is fairly quick because what happens is that basically he he see, seeing that this has happened, he gets to a computer and sends like his coordinates to Atlantis. I don't know how he did this. I don't even. Like, I'm not even talking about how he did this without nobody noticing. Like, who is he sending the coordinates to? Like, is he just broadcasting them? Just a guy in Atlantis. <laughs> I'm here on an evil submarine. 
But Very yeah, evil. I guess he must have sent that. I'm here on the evil submarine. This is where we're going. Um, I and think then if we, you we get the scene. spoke yeah. to the editor of this film, by the way, and said, did you really I, cut okay. up the scene of him dying to him being absolutely fine with a Dr. Shin scene just sending coordinates? I think the response would be like, who's Dr. Shin? You'd be like, oh, well, <laughs> I, I'm glad you brought up the editing because this this part was particularly seemed like it was chopped to like it was really destroyed in the edit. Because like they're up on they're, they're up there in the morning with uh with Boba Fett and the machine to heal him up, and then um Drago walks up and says, "We got a signal, like we gotta go to Antarctica." And then in the very next shot, fucking Amber Heard's like standing right next to him. She's right next to him, but like before he was alone, he was standing there alone, and then she's right there, and it's like, "All right, moving <laughs> on." Like, what'd you cut? What did you cut? What, <laughs> what did what, you do? What, Show me what, what you cut. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so curious. I'm so curious what the original version of the. Yeah, I'm where's the Snyder cut of this movie? Come on, let's go. The, yeah, where's the one no. cut of this one? <laughs> what did it look like? But yeah, anyway, basically, Atlanta's like, all right, you guys have got to work together, guys. You got to work together. Come on, do it for me. Work together, and then gives him a big old hug. And yeah. Then, um, and, and it's like, yeah, you got your little payoff. And then she's like, I'm staying here. To which I thought, no, you're probably too powerful. You probably should go with them. Yeah. Um, like I understand you're sad. Because uh, you really like Boba Fett, but seriously, you're like really powerful. You should probably go with them. But no, nope. that should be part Just of the sort of idea of the movie is that you have to maybe you don't let your emotions get in the way of your duty as a leader or a oh, royalty kind of like, or something like that. I, I imagine a through line Basic would be stuff. interesting is the whole idea of mm. like bigger picture of Arthur could spend a lot more time with his son, but in spending more time doing his work, he creates a better world for his son anyway. But then it's the balance of like a better world in which I'm not really involved in his life, or is it better if I'm more involved in his life? That just seems to me like a pretty easy one to do, especially if he doesn't yeah, like his job. Yeah, it's the Aquaman equivalent of there's a reason daddy works late some nights. Yeah. And exactly. you'll understand when you're older. Yeah. It's not a bad like thing that he necessarily is doing that. But we're not interested in doing any good angles with him. It's only Orm getting nope. that because Orm getting like that encouragement. The only from, angle this uh, movie is is obtuse. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, all right. Karen. It's just, you know, I'm getting his little thing with uh, Nicole Kidman of just that motivation to push him towards being a hero. It's like, yeah, because Orm's the real hero of the story. He's getting all of the standard normal beats that you're supposed to get. <laughs> he really does. Um, he do be a little trolly just... uh, with one of his payoffs with the king, though. Yeah, that one was that one was very much like a trolly. Kind that of feels like, like a... an edited one, too. But it, um, it, it, I. Could it could could I the wonder. film function without that character from that scene onward? I think for the most part you could probably cut him out, couldn't you? And I wonder if he was cut probably. back in because they were like, I don't know. It, it, it almost we're not there yet. We could talk he about just it when sort we of get like there. Shows up again. Yeah, it's a little. He sa know. he, he does save um, some people at the end, but it's like you could just switch him out with anybody at that point. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's. it's it's kind of funny because you wouldn't know it if you're watching this film, but Drago is meant to be Mero's dad. Yeah, you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't know. know it. But I you mean, oh fuck it! it. I just want to mention it now. Like the 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 payoff of will he, will Orb save him when they're clearly antagonistic? They play like suspicious music, and he does a kappa face to him before he leaves. <laughs> and he does do a kappa face. And it's such a like. Well, this doesn't make any sense. And then the the scene just keeps going. Like, so he will save him. Because of course he will. Yeah, the, like if he had just slipped and then we cut something else, we'd be like, oh shit, did he actually? But it's like, no, it just keeps going. It's like, okay, just save him, save him. And it's funny how no one else is just there's just no awareness of this happening from anyone else. No, nobody else is around. Could you imagine if someone saw that? <laughs> and it's it's the simplest drama shit ever. It's like we don't like each other. Big beastie tries to get you. I stopped him. Now we're friends. I'm like, yep. I'm not even. I'm not even saying that doesn't work or anything. It does. It works really well. We see it in loads of things. It's just funny to see it implemented as like a almost a basic one hundred and one of like, you like stories, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, they're cool. And that's the, the, thing is that's the only. That's the only thing you're gonna get in this film. That's, well, and and, and everything we have cool. any praise or neutral sort of perspective on is all all related for the most part. <laughs> like, pretty there much goes again. everything else is just worthless, basically. We got a pretty worthless scene here of just them discussing their plan. Oh, uh, we like, do we? This time <laughs> it's worthless. If, if, it was, if it was particularly worthless, because there's nothing to be said, it's like, they basically, they just talk about a vague plan of like, oh, we got to deal with that cannon. I'll, I'll figure that one out. All right, get armed up. Let's go. And then they <laughs> leave. Disney That's Disney when they buy Star Wars. <laughs> we have to deal with that cannon. <laughs>
<laughs> That's right, they do. This is and a they, problem. Something has to be done. You gotta delete it, get rid of it. Um, but that I mean that's yeah, like that's that's that. And then Manta that they're like back in Atlant they're back in uh, Antarctica and they're looking at all of the the, the melting that they've done and Dr. Oh, Chin's no. like, Oh shit, we are. Uh, what do we do? And then Manta's like, Oh well, you know, I only I only accelerated it by a few years. It's like, Are you kidding me? Like you melted <laughs> enough of Antarctica to reveal Bro, you like, resurrected a zombie king. You've taken it too yeah. far. <laughs> It's like, it, I, I don't know, I mean, if he's already melted, like, a sizable portion of the Antarctic ice sheet, we're already, we're already kind of, like, Jover at this point. Like, yeah, there's, there's probably there's a no lot of flooding that. happening right now across the world with it's, all that It's just, you're ice screwed. Gone. Like, you know, yeah. like, what are you going to do now? It's, it's over. Don't worry, Fringy, they have the technology to reverse it all, apparently. Just reverse it, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, but... Okay. Suck all the uh, hot air back into the volcano. <laughs> I don't know. I guess like maybe Atlantis has got really good carbon capture or something, but no. yeah, it's There's at this point really that you realize big freezers like, they put into Antarctica and just rebuild the ice. I thought they were just going to get everybody to blow real hard on Antarctica yeah, the... and freeze it up. <laughs> I uh, it's at this Everyone point. Open as well. your refrigerators. We'll reverse global warming. Hey. The fact that Manta is directly presented with you, you like destroying the world, and he's like, eh. It's like, oh wow, you're just like not a character. Yeah, he's no. not a character anymore. <laughs> he's just a goober. Um, but then we get uh we get the now I remember you mentioned before something along the lines of why why what why didn't they launch their own sonic waves at the uh at the big submarine um that was attacking at the beginning of the film? Well, they do <gasps> with, with Aquaman using his power to command yeah. fish to Dude, do slave the only many of the like fish. A it's a bunch of whales, right? Yeah, it's a bunch of, a pot of yeah, it's a lot of them. Um, a very oh good. Send the endangered species in to fight into the war. Aquaman, no, please. And they come, they come along and they blast their waves. S send um, them the Pollux the or something. They send them. They blast their waves at the submarine, and for some reason, it causes the engine to overload and blow up. Yeah, and they all Why? die. All of and them they die. All die. There's probably a lot of one. people in that submarine. Very much a, a yeah, like the submarines established as kind of a powerhouse in this film, and then they were like, we need to get rid of it. Fucking, I don't know, whales. If only Atlantis had the power of some whales. <laughs> some whales. Yeah, whales and I think single handedly blew it up. That lady character, I don't know her name, but she, she had the same reaction the audience instead of just like, oh. oh okay, I guess over. that's that then. Yeah. yeah. Well, bye. Yeah, All it right, takes like 30 seconds, gone. if even, and it's just over. Goodbye, big yeah. submarine. We're and, done. Uh, Manta just doesn't give a shit. He never addresses or acknowledges or cares about this. No. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care. It's so, like, it's just... Not even a, I, oh, that's gonna save me a lot of money. I don't have to pay all these hundreds of people in the submarine anymore. Yeah, the orange <laughs> can build on oh, it also, the, the it also just, for that thing. Huh. There's no urgency, because he is apparently oblivious. There was, like, no radio communication of this is no. happening. Um, he he's he's busy making his way into Necros, like on the mm -hmm. in the big uh in the big uh octopus like vehicles. Um, but the Atlanteans are like right behind them. They like swim in through this like opening. They launch a flare, and then a million zombies just start attacking them. And the <laughs> yeah. editing and the editing here is again really messy. Like it's really like you get a big shot of it. It's like panning back, and a bunch of zombies appear, and then suddenly Aquaman is being charged out by like a massive underwater monster. Mm -hmm. And kind of attacks him for five seconds, and then Mero like creates, I don't know, something with her like underwater magic powers, uh, uh, and then kills it. And then they just climb up. They're just now like they're gonna go up oh, while the oh, crabs right. deal with all the zombies. It's really choppy. Yeah. And it's I can a imagine. lot of zombies, by the way. Like they're swarmed. Oh, yeah. they There's the no thing. way they survive this. This is just it's like not a, happening. It's like a swarm of locusts, but underwater, yeah. and they're big people-sized zombies. Um, it's kind of kind of crazy that anybody they could even expect to survive this one. It seems like their force, their force is considerably smaller than that that they had in the first film when it was Atlantis doing all this shit. It's like a small, it's like a small squad when it seems like you need a massive army you here. Bring, yeah, because yeah. Atlantis, it took Atlantis to beat him the first time, or maybe they won yeah. really, really easily. Maybe that's why they didn't kill him. They're just like, oh, you. <laughs> You're you're I'm actually gonna not kill that again. big of a deal. Oh, if you get thawed yeah. out, then they'll just kill you again. I guess I don't know. I'll give I give something to do the, that afternoon. I suppose it's just interesting because in terms of a final set piece, the first one was like absolutely <laughs> bombastic in terms of how big it was. It was ridiculous. This one's like it's big, but it's also like weirdly small as well. Uh, yeah, it, it seems contained quick. in like hallways and like this little mm -hmm. temple area. It does seem smaller. 
it does seem a lot smaller. Um, but I mean, that's that's uh, Ma like Manta heads into the uh, into the throne room, and there are a bunch of these torches, and they light up, and he sees Kordak sitting behind a wall of ice, and meanwhile. Like, uh, the, basically, the, the main team are climbing up to this bridge, the bridge that leads to the castle under all of this ice. And this is where we get to the part that has been already talked about. If Drago gets grabbed by a monster, he's like, Orm, help! And Orm does the cap face and is like, I'm not gonna help you, and yeah. leaves. And then we hang with Drago for, like, a few seconds while he's there, and then Orm comes around on the other side and, like, chops the leg off of the, the monster. It's kind of awkward because he also slips uh, one time, so he could have just died there while he was he doing his little kappa face. <laughs> that would have been awkward. Imagine like, him just coming to help, to help him, oh. and he's just gone. It's like, oh fuck! <laughs> it was like a really I, funny comedic beat. I yeah. should know this, but is is this all taking place underwater or no? Above this is water? above water on the uh, this yeah, it's is in, in the, the ice caves. So yeah. is there? They shouldn't be able to fight, right? Like the crab and Atlantean and everything. Should they be able to fight very well out here? Because so, Worm had to learn how to run. <laughs> so right. remember, in the first film, what they establish is that basically only, only like the royal bloodline guys and and like high higher up, like because their hierarchy, I guess, actually has like genetic aspects to it, where only they can breathe above water. All of the Atlanteans have to wear like suits where they have water in their helmets. Um, and they seem to still be pretty powerful, all of, like, the, like, royal people above land, uh, but any of the Atlantean soldiers would have to be wearing the helmets with the, uh, with the big mask. But it seems like they don't really fight, they don't do shit on land, but they do. In the first movie, they fought, and they fought reasonably competently, they knew how to run and stuff, which is pretty funny, the idea that Orm doesn't know how to run, but, like, the special forces guys, or whatever, you know, they know how to run, like, regular soldiers. That just seems like a... A new thing they've introduced that doesn't make any sense. What's that? Yeah. Terribly executed comedy getting in the way of everything. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, just, I just, it makes me and ask questions that I don't think they have sufficiently good answers. Well, I think to. if we brought this up to like any of the people who worked on this, they'd just be like, "Shut they up!" Fuck. They'd, <laughs> they'd, they'd, really care. Up. they'd be, be like, like "Wait, we'll... remind me what happened in the movie." What? Yeah. Th this. So we're, we we're basically at like the final action set piece stuff of the movie, and it's. It gets real messy here, all right? I'll try and try my best to explain it in, in as clear a way I can. A bunch of Atlanteans are up on this bridge fighting their way to the uh, to the throne room, but they're, they're fighting backwards. Like, the zombies are chasing them towards it. It's not like they have to fight through a massive horde, um, but they're doing that. And while they're doing that, Manta's in, the, in the, the throne room, and he's like, hey, Dr. Shin, you know, hey, um, they help me out here. And then Dr. Shin just gives him a bomb and runs away. <laughs> and then Manta throws it up in the air and it blows up. Um, and, and then we cut back to them fighting outside. And we cut back to, you know, Dr. Shin. It's like, all right, I'm going I'm to get you Arthur Jr. And, and, and try and save you. And then um, Manta, like, just stops him. He, he just, like, he stops him from doing that. And then um, he grabs Arthur Jr., um, well, well, like, Dr. Shin's like, no, don't do that. And he puts him on the table. And then Arthur Jr. communicates, like, telepathically with the waves that they show when, um, whenever it's, like, Arthur communicating with, um, with the fish. Um, and then it cuts back to Manta being in the throne room, like, oh, I'm about to stab. <laughs> He's so evil. <laughs> He's <just laughs> I'm gonna stab, stab this him. child, this baby. <laughs> to Blood then... sacrifice must <laughs> yep. commence. The yeah. child like, sacrifice. You can't make it child. sound stupider than it is. You know what I mean? Like you can't. It's just like that is what it is. So yeah, it's dumb as fuck. That's exactly what it is. And then um, Arthur gets in and like you, you stop that. And then they have a big fight that looks so fake. Pretty sure he teleported um, as well. I don't see how he got there in a split second from where he was. Well, how did he get there and nobody else got there? What he they answer with, with the um the telepathic whatever? They answer how he knows yeah. where the baby is, but how did he Not get how there? He got there. Because, and, and if he got there, why isn't anybody else there? Why isn't Mera there? Like, it's also her son. Oh, don't well. worry, she's coming. <laughs> she's just late. She is. <laughs> she's, she's on her late. way, but she's late. We need, <clears throat> we need this big... The, the reason why this... The, the scene looks fake. It doesn't look like it's... Yeah. I think it's all CG. Um, there's, like, a lot of really impossible and weird camera movements. The choreography is, like, inhumanly fast. 
it doesn't really look all that good. And then and then Aquaman just like loses. He just loses the fight. And then Mads is like, I'm gonna kill you now. But then he he gets stopped just in time by Mera with her crazy ridiculous powers. Like she beats him basically completely. Mm-hmm. Um just in the nick of time. Uh and then she uh she rescues Junior and Manta is getting real mad now. And he grabs the black trident and throws it at uh, Mera. And then as she turns around, slow-mo reveals that uh, Orm caught it. He best caught it. payoff he in the movie. Her. It is the best mm-hmm. payoff in the it movie. It is. It's, um, it's almost like a, oh, like, a, oh, a, oh. Oh, am actually, I watching yeah. a real movie? Oh, what what is, what's happening? happening? So, to, give, to give the film this a little bit of trying credit, to trick me. <laughs> he grabbed it, saving her, but also knowing that some bad shit was probably going to happen mm-hmm. because he did that. Uh, I think, I think um, anyway. I'm not exactly sure how he knows, uh, uh, but but he does, he knows, because he says run, he knows what it's going to do to him. Yes, that's right. And of course, this is, you know, he's saving, he's saving his brother's family, essentially, the family that he could have had. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's a lot to read into it. that makes this really good as a payoff. Yeah, it's uh, especially this combined is with... legitimate praise for Aquaman, the Lost <laughs> yeah. Kingdom. Orm is the main character, this... and he goes on his hero's journey, and it's pretty solid. <laughs> this movie is better uh... than Rebel Moon. This is like, oh, yeah. kind of why oh, there's yeah. actually yeah. something yeah. here. Well, and, and it, it gets added to because you've got a bit more going on here, because now a bunch of green magic flume happens, kind of like what happened when Manta grabbed it in the first place. Um, and it's like Kordax is starting to get control, um, and Manta loses his powers, because at this point Kordax, I guess, has decided you're a cuck. I'm gonna, <laughs> you've I'm gonna get to do because yeah. Orm is way cooler than you, I'm gonna get him to do this. Dude, it is um, and- funny how much the film does not care about Manta at this point. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, because, because, uh, Manta gets up and throws a punch at, uh, at Aquaman, he just catches it and then throws him away. He doesn't it's even like, look at out. him. Doesn't even look. Yeah, yeah it's, it, the sense you get is this is the real drama now. You're the useless guy yeah. can fuck off. Uh, yeah, you're done. Yeah, I'll I mean, kill you later. Out. Don't worry. He's out for now because we've got uh, we've yeah. got we've got drama. We've got drama to do. Um, yeah, there's actually stuff uh, to explain in terms of why yeah. this is solid. Um, because well, I guess the, Arthur is the descendant wanna, of yeah. Atlan, right? So yes, and he's wearing his outfit, and Kordax hates him. So they've got that yeah. drama layer going on, but then also the, he's possessed Orm, who has a lot of underlying issues well, with Arthur. The, uh, he's possessed the brother who uh, isn't, who's got, yeah, exactly, who's got like a similar sort of problem with the dynamic. And he starts, he starts throwing all of this at Orm, like, you wanted to be king, you know, that's your right, and you wanted to be king, go get it. This, this guy took it from, from you, you gotta stop him, you fuck. And and, and, like it was like reclaim Ocean Master, which was a meme in the first exactly. one, but they kind of use it here as you know it's drama. Yeah, like you're you're like the lesser man now. You got to stop him, and then and then Arthur combats it by grabbing onto the trident and then blasting him with like positive memories, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, that's another but, like, point of praise. Uh, Orm is is relying on all the times he's doing his memes in the first film of like I am the power, blah blah, and then rise Atlantis. Aquaman focuses on the memories of them being brothers. It's like, yeah, wow, exactly. look at you go, movie. Look at you so go, then, and, then, and then uh, and then it culminates in them essentially accepting the lesson that uh, that Nicole Kidman was trying to teach them the whole time is we got to stick together, we got to work together, we're brothers. Um, we, like we 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 gotta he he called he calls on brother and tells him to let go of the trident. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also he's telling him to to let go of all of these memories he's holding mm-hmm. on to, all of these negative sort of characterizations he has of himself, the things that he was pursuing because he was told to pursue them. Ocean Master, it's subtext in an Aquaman movie. You'll... It kind of yeah. sneaks up on you because <laughs> yeah, Orm um something about Orm that I find kind of interesting. I think this is how it happened, at least by accident. He's supposed to be somewhat lame, somewhat like uptight, uncool, and needs to chill out. Aquaman's showing him a bit more about life, and obviously this big payoff is Aquaman gets him in the right place he needs to be. But the, the irony, I think, is that they're so bad at doing this that the creative, the only character that's actually like taking the world seriously as a result, it's like they're like, he's lame because he's uptight and needs to unwind. We're like, no, he's actually pretty normal. Yeah. He's reacting to most yeah. things normally. And so, um, you know, it's because he's going to unwind by the end of the film. He's a bit more chill and he's understood, blah, blah, blah. It's like what they tried to make for their own purposes has ended up, uh, I think, boosting what appears to be the arc of just him being a normal guy finally and, you know, understanding the actual nature of what happened. I can't believe I'm speaking about Aquaman 1 and 2 this way. <laughs> it's, it feels weird, but like I said, I, I can... Movie all, the, 
all this is such a clown movie all the way through, and then you have this like, oh wait, there's something. Let me actually watch this properly for two minutes. I was like, yeah. oh, that was kind of nice. Now we're back to clowns. But yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, it just sneaks up on you, as I already said. And I, and it I does. Think it's like an accident. You. Like, it did. How did yeah. this sneak in here? Did they know what they were doing? If they did, then how did they write the rest of the thing? <laughs> did they not actually care? And then maybe they're like, okay, guys, today's the day. We're gonna actually be serious in the writers' room, and they just like cobble. <laughs> they made yeah. this. Well, it's uh, it's kind of yeah, like it's basically the power of them being brothers is what wins the day because. At this point, Kordax is being freed from his prison. He's like, ha yes, I'm free. He's slowly getting um, out of the ice, like, yeah. That's right. And then Arthur throws the black trident at Kordax, but he catches it. Orm then throws Arthur his gold trident. Missed trident opportunity that, you know, for them wanted. to have Orm throw it, I think would have been better. I think yeah. Orm should have thrown it. Um, he should have, yeah. I'm he should have overcome the curse of the trident and done it. Yeah. You can have it be, you know, that he picks up the trident that says, you're the king, and throws it to Arthur, you know, that there's something to be pulled mm. from there. I probably like, wouldn't have minded they each throw their respective throw the, tridents. Yeah. He throws the black trident, he throws away, he throws away all of the bitterness and all of the evilness, he throws yeah. it away. And then Arthur a more a physical and... representation of them defeating evil together, yeah, right. throwing their tridents at him. I think so. So you got they got closer to there. They had part of it. They got part of the payoff there. Uh, the point being, he throws the gold trident. It shatters. It shatters yeah. the black one and kills Cordax. And Necro starts to fall apart. And it's like, um, so why didn't Atlan do that? Yeah. <laughs> easy you just he couldn't bring himself to kill his brother but he could bring himself to enslave him in yeah, ice in for a thousand years or so. ever from an ice for the yeah. spell that would require a baby <laughs> sacrifice to potentially um, free him uh, one of his atlan was a strange guy like, this feels like they pulled it directly out of like uncharted 2 of oh my god we've defeated the bad guy now the city's falling apart and we yeah. gotta get out of here it's uh they did that in uncharted 3 as well actually it's like Oh no, the city's falling apart. We gotta get out of here. I mean, there's really not much to be it's said. It's kind of funny there. because well, then we get the, the, the funniest because payoff. Him being alive has nothing to do with the city being there because the city was built before no. he became a zombie man. So there's no reason for it to collapse. Yeah. The yes. Explosion did it. That's, that's no, what because that's what happens at the end. Is the okay. evil place just just gets destroyed and it tumbles down into the out. ocean or whatever. Also, the CGI out. people need to make that seahorse uh, again. So. That's, that's yeah, the oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> they need to get their their job. Yeah, yeah. get their hours oh, yeah. in, get that overtime. Basically, you know, they just escape, right? Like it's yeah. they get on the seahorse yeah, and get out, and then whoa, 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 and whoa, whoa! You skipped over the best payoff. What was the best payoff? Black Manta. <laughs> Man oh Manta. yeah, right. oh, you're right. right. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> he's he's oh, hanging yeah, on the edge of a sorry, cliff sorry. for some reason that right. suddenly appeared, and then Aquaman <laughs> is now he's he's repeated the moment from the first film. He sees him. He could help him, but will he leave him? And Aquaman's like, no. This time, I will help you, sir. And reaches out for him, and Black Manta just says, "Was it? Is it never? Never? And just let's yeah, go." So like he holds it's... out his head, he looks out of it, and he's like, never. And let's go! <laughs> <laughs> so, here's something funny. I think the point of that is supposed to be reflective of Orm, that they both went on journeys of, like, hatred driven by that kind of motivation, that Orm was able to let go of the hatred and move on and grow as a person. Meanwhile, Black Manta was not. I was like, don't you think you needed to work on the nature of the death that you're saying he <laughs> couldn't let go, and that he let go? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you I need don't to... know what it is, but... The framing is really funny as it, it is. falls down. He like falls down and then hits a rock. <laughs> it doesn't even tumble. like uh, this would be probably an example of them trying to stay on theme and it just fucked the character. Because like, why would he, as someone who wants Aquaman dead more than anything, he would be the kind of character to accept the help and then stab him as soon as he gets up. And that's what he yeah, would do. Normally, yeah, because that's how he's so committed to this. He's real this willing the, to uh, sacrifice a baby for its blood in a yeah. like, magic ritual. Um, so, like, I, I damn, I'm forgetting what I know that this is in a film of some sort of the payoff of, yeah, I'll take your hand and then stab him or something or hit him. And then they let go out of the reaction of, like, oh shit, you hurt me, I'll let go. And then they fall to their death. What am I thinking of? That's oh, definitely you're happened. Black Widow. Black Widow. Uh, Wait, is that in Black Widow? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Remind like, me. Uh, oh, right, she no, reaches um, for the the Black Widow person, and then she's like, ah, I'm going to get you with a knife, and I'm going to cut your hand that's holding me. Oh, you dropped me. Oh, I'm actually, I think you might be right. Kind of, <laughs> hmm. The other one I was thinking of is in Grand Theft Auto V, in one of the endings. In the ending, if you go after Michael, 
um, you can try and help him up or just drop him. And if you help him up, as you pull him up, he headbutts Franklin and then Franklin lets go and then he falls down and dies. I feel like that's the payoff, isn't it? Of, of Arthur tries to help, Manta attacks him, and then Arthur lets go, not because he's dropping him to kill him, but dropping him because, oh, you hurt me. And then that's his you have death, to try and just, like, his violence brings his destruction about, you know? Yeah, you use that, but you also, if you can, try and intertwine some way of his stubbornness gets him killed, right? Which is kind of that inability to let go. He's like, they both realizing the world's crumbling around them. There's an obvious doorway, and uh, he's like, we got, you know, but he just won't stop trying to kill him. Maybe even have, you know, Black Manta sees that his best weapon is to the right, the exit's to the left. He goes to grab the weapon, and then he gets killed and for then it. It collapses. As opposed to just never. Bye. Yeah, and let it go, which is <laughs> it's so in my head it really sits the contradiction of like, why did you show him dying by letting go when the whole point is he can't let go? Exactly. Why would he kill himself? Why would he keep trying to stop Aquaman, you know? Yeah, he's right he's, there. Well, I guess we're just left to conclude that he is so resistant to the idea of accepting any help from Aquaman, even if it is momentary in service of trying to kill him, that he would rather die. I, 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 I think the way you'd have to do it, but it doesn't translate as well, I think, to normal audiences, is that Aquaman's like, come on, grab my hand, he just, like, refuses, and he's like, I'll fucking save myself, I'll figure this out, and then we we don't see him do the fall, we just leave the room, sort of thing, and it's like, you know, he stays there and all the rocks fall down, it's just like, he should be definitely dead, I'm just trying to get away from the whole, he let go because he couldn't let go thing, it just, it's just a big <laughs> old scramble in my head. Yep. Pretty uh, pretty bad. Um, but that's yeah. it for him. Pretty and then though. they escape. Sorry, I. It's just the movie forgets about him in a big way. Yes, <laughs> Black Manta is not relevant <laughs> at all. Nope. No, he's a vehicle for some other floopy villain. And yeah, they do nothing with him. They just shouldn't have bothered. He was, he was really just to cool. allow other things to happen. That's the only reason he was here. Pretty much. Pretty lame. Um, but that's uh, that's that. Everybody essentially uh, reunite on an iceberg. Uh, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, Arthur Jr., he's okay, and, um... That baby is freezing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, probably, it's probably, yeah, probably, I mean, it's <laughs> Antarctica, he's probably very, very cold. Oh, um, yeah. Basically, they just do a bunch of the normal payoffs of Orm hands, uh, Drago back his trident, which, I don't remember him getting it, but he just had it, and he gives it back to him. Whatever. Um, he, he picks it up somewhere, <laughs> well, he gave I it to him. him I thought he gave it to him because he, he wouldn't give him a gun earlier in the armory, and then... Yeah, he, he gave him an axe. Armor. He gave, gave him an, an axe, axe. Not so not maybe. No, he, he just I, I, he just picked it up during the escape. I'm pretty sure. I remember oh, him picking it up, and I was like, "Why is it? Why, what's that?" And I was like, "Oh, it says okay. Trident." Okay, maybe I don't know why that's here, but he oh, he brought another, it. another part that got cut out. Um, and then also, Doctor Shin just gets let off the hook. They're like, "Yeah, thanks for helping us." Like, dude, he's got. <laughs> he go personally to killed trade. a lot of your citizens. He pressed yeah. the button. He was there. He worked for the villain for many months. Mm-hmm. No, it's all good. It's cool. You're fine. It's chill. Well. Just a little bit of global warming. No worries. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, also... The, some, some, some ice cubes can't solve. Exactly. The, uh, the, the Crab King got his uh, claw cut off again, but he's okay otherwise. Yeah, yeah he's uh, like, it'll take me months to grow this back. Oh, oh. I'm so annoyed. Oh, boy. Hey, remember when you killed all my citizens, I was, Aquaman? I, <laughs> I was an Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny. But uh, we also get the... We get like the final sort of actual worthwhile payoff in the film, which is essentially Arthur tells Orm, you know, your debt's paid, which, um, you know, like, yeah, I mean, he did, he did a lot of, he, he did save the day. Um, he sure did. He used to be a changed man. Oh, yeah. I mean, saving, um, you know, the wife and kid of Aquaman, I believe he would be completely cleared yeah. in his books. Yeah, exactly. And then even beyond that, it's like we saved the world um, as well. You add that on top. Orm's a real, you know, he's, he's had his little redemption arc. Um, but they tell him, like, you know, you should probably lay low since a lot of people still don't like you. Uh, and then and then you get the... Uh, the sequel set up as well. Of like, but, might need you in future. Mm. <laughs> I don't think going to happen. We, no. we, got, we got the last payoff. Now, throughout the film, whenever uh, Arthur calls Orm brother, he gets uh, really pissed off. Like, he really, he really doesn't like that. But finally, Orm calls Arthur his brother. Two shake hands. And not exactly, that, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the one of the most obvious, like, there you go, yeah, okie dokie. 
it's normal, but it's Orm, yeah. you know? Orm, the, the unsung hero. Of, well, I guess he's his well sung yeah, hero of the of the film. And he offers some final words of encouragement. Um he basically he, it's in you know, in keeping with the whole thing of the basic payoffs, he gives Arthur all of what he needs to hear, which is Atlantis is lucky to have you. You gotta trust your instincts. If you lead, Atlantis will follow. Um, and then, uh, he repeats Arthur's earlier remark that a true king builds bridges. Yeah. And then, uh, he leaves, and everybody celebrates their victory, but he's Ooh. off to explore the world, all on his lonesome, in DC's Orm, coming to theaters in 20 years. Yeah. I would watch the Orm movie. I would. Because they, they, they yeah. play around with we the, watch this, they, so. mostly for jokes, but they play around with the idea of he doesn't understand the surface world, and then they get to it later with mm -hmm. him on the food, right? And they did the cockroach yeah. thing. I was like, there's an idea there. But, well, um, you, get a, you get a glimpse of it in the, the final montage, because that's, that's, that's what we, like, we see it in the final montage of uh, Arthur revealing Atlantis to the world, like he's sending a delegation to the surface, and while he gives his big speech about we got to unite the land and the sea. You get a little bit where uh, where Orm is like eating a burger, exploring the mm -hmm. above world, learning learning about the world, which feels like that could be a movie of just Orm learning about this this world that yeah, he it, was always yeah, led to yeah, hate. Super and cheap, nice and easy, world. you know. And the the drama would be that some horrible thing is happening, and he decides to intervene, and then he has to hide his identity, sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, that film, unfortunately, will never happen. No, no it's <laughs> um, the one we all want, but, you know, it's okay. No, they but, finally uh, tease a movie we want to see, and the damn it, and the whole the cinematic TV universe TV is done. The whole universe is over, because this is it. It's Aquaman giving a speech, like, we gotta we gotta work together, the land and the sea, I'm Aquaman, woohoo, and then Whoa, that's it. Mic drop. Cringe. It's but it's so over. funny as well, because they're like, Aquaman's dad's fine, by the way. He's like, yep, yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Very happy montage of look, everybody's happy, everybody's doing okay. The goodbye, Snyder Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Bye. It's over. We're done. See ya. And that's the end of the film. Yeah. And the end All of right. the DCU as we know it. That's that's it. <laughs> we, we're done the end though. Of the goodbye, everybody. Thanks you for tuning in. Can't imagine <laughs> how happy they are to have gotten the last one out that was on, you know, the production line before the refresh. Yeah, yeah their obligations yeah. are fulfilled. Like fucking Oof. hell. So embarrassing. <laughs> I can't believe that this begun all those years ago with what movie? Man of uh, Steel. Man of Steel was yep. the oh boy. Ten years ago. And here we ten are, years Aquaman ten two. Years later, it's over. Uh, this turned out just like we wanted. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, I guess it's like exactly what I expected, but I didn't know that I'd like Orm uh, as like an element. But otherwise, I mean, yeah. it's just a normal terrible surprise film. hit. It's, yeah, it's bad. Very Orm's bad, good. but everything yeah. else is bad. <laughs> it's just a little piece it. here and there of like, oh, yeah. writing, cool. And that's 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 it for the DC EU. A very unceremonious uh, end. It, it was shambling right. along for its entire existence, mainly kept alive by like a couple of shocking results here and there of like, whoa, that uh -huh. one did pretty well. I think so. I think that's a good one. Aquaman. It's funny. Wonder Woman and Aquaman are kind of the reason why this shit didn't end sooner. Yeah. If they had and both flopped, it or whatever, it'd be Zack so Snyder over. At the helm. If the um, if Zack Snyder was the one who made the movie that would be the last DC movie, I'm sure it would have been well received, like, right? Yeah, last of the DC EU original. He was allowed to end the story. Nah, he was given a three hour yeah, time code limit, and it and mm. it was like he's allowed to have any than all the characters. Oh my god, I wonder what he'd do. I mean, the reality is that like doing a reset just means that you can put a lot of this stuff to rest fairly effectively because you can divorce it completely to where there's no hope of uh of continuing with any threads here. Though it depends on whether they're doing this half and half approach of well, I'm keeping some of my actors but getting rid of other ones. I don't know what kind of message that necessarily sends about continuity. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah, especially between the actors. It just seems a little like hmm. Well, it's not very fair, is it? The actors that you got to work with. Especially the shitty actor make. like uh, Gal Gadot, you know, like that oh, no, whole she's, thing. She's about, out. Yeah. They're all out. <laughs> yeah. All the no more cameos. Da, 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 Resurrects yeah. main character. It's uh oh yeah, that's Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. Oh boy. Where does it <laughs> sit? Maybe that's uh, maybe that's a good way to sort of wrap it up. Probably this, uh, three. Uh, what like number three best, like third best? Oh, I thought you meant like a number out of ten. Where does it sit in terms oh. of like ranking the <laughs> Snyderverse oh, if we're calling it that? Three out of ten might still be third. You never know. It might be. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> uh, tough to uh, think about. With, it. No, with a three, that's for sure. I uh, yeah, it's about a three. Um, yeah. something like that. Um, yeah, three is. 
I think it's like marginally better than the first film. If we, if yeah. we, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, I think after it's talking about right. specific, the Orm like, stuff is an actual payoff. I've, honestly, and it actually has some stuff behind it. I've kind of forgotten our listing and our justification. Uh, it's not beating the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad was number one, and then Justice League, I think, was. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> really? If only you knew how bad it truly was. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, the problem is that um, it was like an astounding mix of basically between one and three out of ten for every single DCEU film, um, which is kind of funny. Just makes it mm. like practically impossible to rank in any meaningful way. And we will it's somewhere there. Some higher of the... up, I think. You people on the internet who had a nasty thing to say about Wonder Woman, eh? Remember that? Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, we were right. Kind of, well, kind of, it's a bad film. It's really bad. Uh, Chris really Pine bad. is like the main good thing about it. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is um. I I I feel like this one isn't in the lower half. It's got to be in. No, the it's definitely the upper half. half but yeah, it's in the upper yeah. half for sure. What does that mean, though? <laughs> not, <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. It just means it has a couple of story beats that kind of check out. If they were on purpose or not, might is another story. Oh, but uh, riddled with a lot of the same bad plot and world. Exactly. In the first film. It's ninety percent clown movie, with <laughs> full of plot holes and bullshit, shitty humor. As you already pointed out, a lot of times it's just edited to shreds, like. Mm -hmm. Just people appearing out of nowhere, and it's like, oh, now we're in the ship now. Why? I don't know, but we we're somewhere else now. So, okay, right, okay, right. Black Manta, Manta is just it's worthless. Could just put any other character in there that's just clownishly evil. So, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's I, I don't know uh, what else to say. It's, it's I think pretty, I'm not even interested it's pretty in bad. Being... <laughs> probably ranking because who can it's, it's i don't give a shit really either, <laughs> it's suitable yeah. to say like eh, fuck it, it pooped out i don't out. care it... they all stink um some just less than others what a, what uh, a disaster the cinematic suicide universe. squad sort of sits in a special place mm -hmm. above the rest though um no it had the but... the coveted five out of ten from us didn't it i <laughs> guess that's right which the dcu the that's impressive like, margin yeah it is a considerably man. Awesome... Remember, remember Ratcatcher. Oh, was that show? Yeah, us. Yeah, jeez. Oh man. Remember Peacemaker. Oh, so good. Bloodsport. Yep. Oh yeah, that was that was that was a that was a decent. That was yeah. I like that movie. Um, and then everything else is dramatically worse, and now mm. it's over. Uh, well, here's a question. Um, how optimistic are any of you guys really at all for the DCU? My estimation um, of James Gunn as a creative has gone down recently. Uh, I think yeah, Superman Legacy Guardians. will be his last chance to recover, in my mm -hmm. view. As for how kind good of, I think yeah. it'll be, it's kind of up in the air. I really don't know. If Guardians 3 was really good, I would be a lot more optimistic. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I would assume he's packing as much prep into this one as he can, because this is the most important thing that's going to happen in his career, potentially. So he's really got to try uh, for this one. Very likely. I'd say so, because I think, um, I think that th it, it, it must succeed. It has to be good. It can't just be okay. It has to be good, and it has to make a lot of it money. It needs to yeah, yes. get people talking. It needs to make money. It needs to really establish, uh, establish itself in the culture. Uh, Marvel has poised themselves in a position where they can absolutely be taken over culturally. They yeah, have shot yes. themselves in I the mean, foot too many times. They're out of toes. I mean, the the field is open and wide for James Gunn to knock this out of the park. I, I feel it's like it's a matter he, of if he'll do it. I feel like if he's just smart, he's just going to start slow, build up the characters, oh, have the low stakes, is... not don't go crazy. You know, just so sort of hey, those characters, that's what they stand for. They they actually care about people and that's their values and then maybe sometime in like i don't know 10 years you can have your little justice league adventure maybe don't Here's do what dc did before just don't do that how much do you know about the film metal uh how much do you know about like the casting and 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 all of that uh not a lot basically nothing to be honest i know nothing there's, either. Like, there's a lot of non-superman characters in the film mm. um okay. like characters who were part of other parts of the world you got a uh, Green Lantern, Hawk Girl, uh, mm. Mr. Terrific. There's yeah, we're like worried a about a Age of Ultron problem again with this one potentially because we need yeah. to. You need to really just focus on Superman. Get Superman's movie out of the way first, please. I can't even say that's advice. 
their goal is that they want to have Superman legacy be part of a DC world that's already filled with like established heroes rather mm. than the Iron Man thing where as far as everybody was concerned, Iron Man was basically the first in that world. And then it all started to ramp up afterward. But this case right. it seems like they want to start with an established world, which again, you got a lot of things you got to achieve. You got to get people to like Superman and Lois. You know, that's what you got to do. You got to get them to like those characters in that film. It's just uh, and be interested in their story. When I look back on like the MCU when it started to how it was going versus this new start for the DC's next universe, it's like every little problem with not taking care of your universe, and every time you retcon and be like, actually, these guys were here a hundred years ago, these guys are here fifty, mm -hmm. these guys are here two hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. It's very much like I feel like you can't do that even as best as you can do it. You still can't do it without fraying the edges just a bit of your overall threads. It's like there's some fray in there now. And you'd be like, can we just? Try to avoid that as best as possible. Keep everything as, as strict and straight as you can because it just... The attitudes uh, came alongside the problems over the MCU. It was like, those things were picked up on and complained about. Let's say Phase 1 and 2. And then, you know, characters being out of character, crazy world-building implications, all the plot. And to the point where Phase 4 and 5, it's gotten so absurd nobody can follow it anymore. It's like, that's where it all begins. So, like, why overcomplicate? I feel like you're actually going to be so much better off if you just worked really hard and did an Iron Man again, but for DC. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good choice. Start think, small. Uh, start small and slow. And start comprehensible. Start with, start with uh, first. well, it's just his, there's no getting around it. His plan is weird. Like, Superman, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. A Batman movie with the least popular Robin. Uh, uh, interesting okay. choice. Um, interesting choice. Booster Gold. It's like, wow. I don't know who that is. Are you sure? <laughs> um, uh, the, the Authority. Yeah. I, I don't know what uh, they are. Uh, okay. Um, a prequel Wonder Woman, like, Themyscira show. Huh? Compared, it was, thing. was that compared to Game of Thrones, that Themyscira one? Yes, they yeah. did. They did compare uh, it to Game of Thrones. Fucking dumb. Oh, that's going to be uh, shit then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever people make that comparison, I feel like, yeah. It, it's just, you know, it, it seems like a, a weird selection, because to me it seems like the safe choice is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Uh, and not only that, but really safe interpretations of each of those characters uh, instead of a really, yeah, and then, and then a Supergirl movie as well. And it's like, okay, all right, um, risky. Uh, oh, and also that they're doing that Creature Commandos animated series as the first pro project in the DCU. That's number one before Superman. That's the beginning. And a Waller, and Amanda Waller. Uh, like, yeah, TV I really want more of her. Mm. <laughs> I mean, the actress is fine. It's just like, the, yeah. I don't even know what to say about the character. Her whole thing is just look at how surprising it is that she's so mean. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. It's it's just yeah. It's um it's a really kind of strange amalgamation. Maybe we'll find out new now that DC. EU is officially over, maybe they'll start saying, well, no, we do actually have a new Wonder Woman. We do have, like, these new sets of uh, characters, and they can actually talk about it without it compromising the films that were coming out, because they've come out and failed. So it's over, and there's no point in even pretending that uh, there's value in preserving the DCEU. You know, you can just move on and start fresh, but it's only kind of fresh, and also weird set of projects. I don't know. I'm not sure. I And then there's plus, there's just the general decline of superhero like films and tv shows in terms of popularity yeah and like it's partially it's marvel's fault you know because of the mm -hmm. low quality uh people would be you know chomping at the bit for more superhero stuff if it was consistently good or at least entertaining but now that kind of bleeds off into anyone else who wants to do superhero stuff and they kind of have that a little bit of a hump to get over Though I yep. suppose you also have the potential of people just being really hungry for good stuff because marvel's no longer delivering Maybe, especially when, uh, remember, there's only one MCU film next year, Deadpool, which doesn't even, you know, it's kind of like, feels like it's kind of its own thing in a certain sense. There's yeah. three Sony Marvel movies, though, beginning with Madam Web, and then yes. leading into uh, Venom My 3, queen. and then I think, uh, mm. I think Craven. So you got those in the mix, and no DC projects, except for the those two shows way later in the year. So it's uh, going to be quite a year by comparison. Mm -hmm. I guess the boys as well. That's coming out. Yeah, this year is over. It's done. We're finished. We're just, We're, uh, killed, killed it. it. Killed it dead. We did. We, yeah. They. Yeah. They did. The DCEU is kill. Over. Behind us. Mm-hmm.
It's kind of funny because we use dead to describe a lot of different things. Oftentimes it can be hyperbolic or metaphorical, but this time it feels like it's like, well, no, it's dead. It's gone. It's, yeah, it's, nothing it's, else is happening. It's Donzo. dead. Mm -hmm. uh, this it's hasn't even got much book. fanfare. No one cares about the <laughs> story ending with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. It added nothing to the overall story at all. I didn't care. Nope. Nobody cared. And if, the, and if, if DC didn't even care, why should you, you know? Yeah, yeah I don't give a shit. I care about Orm, but you know, <laughs> maybe but maybe it's just uh... Orm doesn't get a movie at this point. They just tease, you know, they have him sort of like a surprise, fun, neat character. Tease that he's off going to have his little adventures, eating cheeseburgers, and then the DCEU ends, and we can just fill in the rest with our minds. James got an interview. They're like, "Who are you keeping? Like, who are you keeping on?" He's just like, "Oh, Orm, Patrick Wilson. That's about it." <laughs> like, <laughs> Literally just Orm. It's like, why? And he just laughs like... at everyone. He's like, "Ha ha ha! It was me." <laughs> Um, well, I guess that, uh, that wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed coverage of Aquaman 2 and The Lost Ooh, Kingdom 2, the second one, mm -hmm. the sequel. Like, mm -hmm. Underwater Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. Ah, oh, yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, bye! bye. Yeah, bye, everybody! Bye, See bye. ya later for the next DCEU. Wombo noises.